inside the broadcast booth. I'm Austin Bechtel alongside my good friend and former WNJ wide receiver Alex Tarrant. Third member of our crew, Robert Mangino, will join us in just a moment. This is a big rivalry matchup between Westminster and WNJ, Alex, that you're very familiar with. The Presidents had a huge winning streak at home from 2012 to 2019 that was broken by Westminster. And ever since, the Titans have had the upper hand. They have had the upper hand. However, you're going to see that these players and these teams play each other a little bit differently. Uh, we noticed that this matchup's a little earlier in the season than we like. However, it doesn't mean it's less important. WNJ with a very explosive offense under the direction of Jake Pugh. We'll get to him in just a moment. But on the defensive side for Westminster, who's going to be the key on the defensive end to stop the Presidents? And the key is going to be at the very center of the defense, and that's Dylan Sleva. He's relentless to the ball. He's had 24 total tackles over the last two weeks, and 14 of those came last week against the Tomcats, and it was his career high. Now, for the Presidents, it all starts under center with the junior quarterback, Jake Pugh, in his first full season as the starter. Exactly. Everything runs through him. He makes plays with his arm and with his legs. He uh, has eight touchdowns over the last two weeks, and then that accounts for over 600 yards of offense. If they're going to continue this hot streak on the offensive side, it's going to go through him. And Pugh was also named PAC Offensive Player of the Week last week after a career-high five touchdown passes and a 42-7 to win against Bethany. What are the keys to the game? First for visiting Westminster, what do the Titans have to do on the road against the Presidents to win this one and improve it 2-1? And, and the most important thing for them is pass rush. Like I said, Jake Pugh is very tough to stop. You need to get to the quarterback today and then sustain drives. This Westminster defense and this offense really wants to control the game. The only way they control it is by sustaining drives, converting on third down, converting in the red zone, and then we'll see that that will hopefully help them win today. Now on the opposite side for Washington and Jefferson, it starts with Pew, but as well, you need to be able to get him a little bit of help. Exactly. That's why no matter how bad the run game gets early on in the game, you stay with it. You keep moving forward and then score in the red zone. This offense struggles at times, even though it produces a lot of yards, to convert in the red zone. I'm interested to see what Sirianni draws up um, to help them win today. It's the Westminster Titans and the Washington and Jefferson presidents on KDK Plus. Kickoff coming up next. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. Just about set for kickoff at Cameron Stadium, high above in Washington, Pennsylvania. We send it now down to the third member of our crew, Robert Mangino. Mangino, take it away. Austin, in talking to Siriana before the game, he says the key to victory today is splash plays. Don't give up any and have some of them yourself. Also, turnover is absolutely critical. Benzel says, listen, we have to control Jake Pugh. You're not going to be able to stop him. He's going to get his TDs, but we have to keep them to a minimum. And it's important to keep them from having a fast start. Thomas Jefferson has an amazing record, 138-5 and five when they're leading at halftime. It's all about controlling the tempo of this game for Westminster. Thanks, man, you know, and yeah, just that TJ quarterback of Jake Pugh has taken it to the next level after – Winning Whitfield championships with the Jaguars, now to the Presidents, and has just been electric for Washington and Jefferson in the conference. And that offense will take the field to begin the game here today. Westminster will kick it away. Two men back deep for the Presidents. It is a short kick fielded at the 15-yard line. Past the 20, 25, making a move towards the near side of the field is Levi Schwartz. Schwartz at the 40. Schwartz still going past the 45 and down at the 47-yard line. Great field position, and a flag does come in at the end of it, right near the Washington and Jefferson sideline. Have to check the flag to see if it's on the run back. 
And it is an illegal block in the back that will move W and J back to begin the drive. But still a very positive run back by Levi Schwartz, the sophomore kick returner. After it was a short kick to the 15, and we take a look now at the Washington and Jefferson starting offense, led by Jake Pugh, the PAC Offensive Player of the Week last week with a career-high five touchdown passes against Bethany. 13 of 17 for 294 yards and four touchdowns. Four touchdowns in the first half of last week's game. Stav, Cazera, Colin, Fertini, Nakocha on the offensive line. Peduzzi, Anthony Rosati, Jacob Macosco, some of the key wide receivers, as well as Zach Cernudo at the H-back position. So Pew lines up in the pistol. Good to see Justin Huss back there on the field this season after being hurt at the very end of in the middle part of last year. First pass is caught by Rosati. Rosati good enough for a first down. Gets to about midfield and a pickup of 12 on first down as Washington and Jefferson gets back to just about the same spot before the penalty on the opening kick. Now on the opposite side for Westminster, Alex talked about it. It starts in the middle with Dylan Sleva. Moon High School product, leads the team with 24 tackles, has two tackles for loss this year as well but matthew petruzzi an outside linebacker was named pac newcomer of the week last week justin haas up the middle breaking off tacklers to the 45 yard line Haas with a great game picks up six yards on first down and moves into westminster territory and that's exactly what you want to see from the presidents going to the run game early and you see those holes are already opening up so early in the game we're going to see them stick to it And as you know, Alex, playing on this offense for four years, WJ up tempo offense quickly to the line, 25 seconds on the play clock to snap it. Pew on the fake handoff, starting to feel the pressure, now dumps it off. There's Huss, past the 40. Flag does come in as Huss gets his way to the 30 yard line. Flag from the near side of the field and also one at the very end of the play on the far side as Huss made his way to the 25 yard line. But have to check the flags, could be two separate penalties here. I definitely saw Paduzzi on the outside with the holding call. In the near side, this might be two penalties on W and J. Offense already starting to move back. Paul Harris, the second, our head referee today. So a holding penalty on the presidents as well as an illegal man downfield. The holding penalty was declined. The illegal man penalty was accepted. It backs the ball up to the Westminster 49-yard line. As much as you're seeing all this positive gains, they're all being pulled back by these terrible penalties. Um, they need to limit their mistakes in order to keep the ball moving down the field. Three total penalties for W and J so far. We're not even two minutes into the game. Rosati goes in motion right to left. Handoff goes up the middle to Huss. Nothing there. Defensive line collapsed in on him quickly. Was able to move the pile forward for about two yards on the play. Mitchell Myers, Josh Elm, some of the defensive linemen right up front for Westminster that we're watching. Carter Chin as well, who leads the team with four tackles for loss. Sets up third down and five at the Westminster 46. Two receivers line up far side of the field for Pew, one near side, that's McCoskill. So new to the tight end, left side of the formation as well. Sadi goes in motion to the near side of the field. Pew looking right side over the middle. Got Peduzzi first down past the 35. Spins his way to the 33-yard line before he's tackled down by Dylan Sleva, but good enough to pick up a first down on third and five. You're going to see this a lot with the presidents, and you're going to see those RPOs, those run pass option fakes, and then you're going to see Jake Pugh pulling the ball and then giving it to Peduzzi on the slant route. You're going to see that a lot today. It's going to be a common theme. How difficult is it to defend something like that? Because W and J uses that in so many different ways, and Pew has the ability to scramble. It's way more hard to defend, especially when you're getting pushed on the run side. Pew lines up shotgun. Three receivers line up near side. Pew fakes a handoff and carry it himself. Pew far side of the field gets past the 30, takes a hit and goes out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Williams, the senior cornerback at 5'10", 170, brings him down. And this is what makes Jake Pugh so, so dangerous because not only is he the quarterback, he also is another running back out there by the way he moves his legs. And his speed and agility, especially on the edge, was apparent on that play as well. He's obviously very good moving left to right, but you can also see him run downhill and make some tough, tough runs. Lines up in the pistol formation with Troy Volpatti in the backfield. Saudi goes in motion again. 
Handoff fake to Volpatti as you will carry it. Lots of open running room. Past the 20 yard line, dives towards the 16. Into the red zone and another WNJ first down. What makes these run pass options so difficult to stop is when you have a quarterback like Pugh who holds it as long as he can and really sells that fake as much as he can because that we'll see these defenders start to commit and then it leaves those wide open lanes on the outside. And that's been pretty apparent that for Westminster defensively, you got to respect both of it and they've been going towards the running back at least on that last play. Will Patty with a good fake. So a couple new players onto the field on either side, including Raymond Holmes, the junior running back for W and J. He lines up on the right side of the formation in the backfield. Pistol formation for Jake Pugh. Will Patty the back, fake it that way, and Pugh now rolling out. Gets a block from Holmes, past the 15 to 10. Pugh stumbles his way and runs over a defender. Big hit by Jake Pugh on Corday Williams. And that's what I was just talking about. The way he can get downhill and finish those runs, you saw in that last play, he was absolutely able to just run through the defender to do a little bit of a statement and show why the presidents aren't mean business today. You could tell how he finished off that run. That was an angry run. They show on Good Morning Football for the NFL Network. Second down and one ball at the seven yard line. Pistol formation for Pew. McCoskey lines up near side of the field as the wide receiver one-on-one -on -one coverage. Cole Patty runs past the defender, dives to the pylon and is gonna be rolled a yard short. Joyful Patty just a little bit short there as Matthew Ranza, the strong safety, brought him down just a little bit short. There are a couple of conflicting signals there. I think that was, is it going to be ruled a WNJ touchdown? I think he was short as now Zach Cernuto lines up as the quarterback. Direct snap to him. Cernuto fights his way into the end zone as the president punts it in from one yard out. And that's their goal line package. You're gonna see there's gonna be three to four different tight ends, all pushing forward in that little wedge play with Cernuto, running the ball, easy touchdown. Cernuto, the halfback from Scottsdale, PA, junior at 5'11". Able to punch it in for the first points of the game, six nothing W and J. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold, kick out from Hunter. Right down the middle and good. 10-14 to go in the first quarter of play. Washington and Jefferson strikes on its opening possession and leads it 7-0 at Cameron Stadium. Why call two men in a truck? If you're like Joe, you need to move your business without moving a single meeting. The word stop isn't in your vocabulary. You want it handled with no hitches, no glitches, and no sweat. That's why you call two men in a truck. Two men in a truck. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. You can now get more local news on KDKA Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 1230 on KDKA Plus. 7 and nothing. Washington and Jefferson leads it after striking on their opening drive. Zach Sernudo punched it in from one yard out. Now it's that's a position that Sernudo is familiar with, taking the direct snap, acting as the quarterback. Exactly. He played quarterback in high school. He's used to those tough runs in the end zone, and that makes his mark early on. Kickoff short and fielded at about the 12-yard line. It is fumbled right away, picked up at the 17, and trying to find some running room is Grayer. He'll go out of close to going out of bounds at the 20-yard line. As we take a look at the Westminster offense, led by sophomore quarterback Ty McGowan. 
Scott Benzel, the head coach of the Titans, said to me this week, Austin, I love Ty McGowan. Really excited what he could bring to the table. The Moon High School product and a good offensive front that's pretty young as well. Two freshmen starting on the left side of the offensive line. A lot of development there, but also on the offensive side of the ball, Jalen Royal Island, one of the wide receivers to look out for, and Jalen Washington. Handoff goes up the middle. W and J stops it right away. Goes for about a loss of one on the play as the president's front was right there on the spot. And that's Avery Keith. He's a transfer over this year. Um, he's the brother of Alex Keith. And then you also see in the interior, Dawson Dietz, just some tough, tough people in the middle, just able to stop those runs early and often. As we take a look at the WJ defense, Jaron Timmons also on that front, Justin Johns, Tanner Bull Patty, veteran players, Aaron Carruthers, Zakai Simmons, Bruno Fabricki in the secondary. Second down and 11, ball at the 20 yard line for McGowan. The lefty quarterback spins it far side of the field and tackle made right away on the play. As whistles signal for a penalty flag that was thrown right off the snap. So we'll see if this play counts. Jaron Timmons, the one that made the tackle. We're gonna see an illegal man downfield. It's gonna push the Westminster offense back early on. It looks like that play just took a little bit. Offense, number 87 was covered up, went downfield and passed across the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. It seems like it took a little bit for that play to develop, too. And for Westminster, w &J was able to avoid some penalties, three penalties on the opening drive, including one on the opening kickoff. Westminster, though, with a younger team, something that you definitely want to try to avoid. It's going to be a little bit tougher for the Westminster offense than for the WJ offense because the WJ offense relies on their pass game way more than the Westminster side. Um, so you're going to see now that they're behind the chains, they're going to have to go to something they're a little bit more uncomfortable with. Second down and long for McGowan. Flips it out to Gomes. Gomes gets tackled right away by Justin Johns at the 20-yard line. Did get some of those penalty yardage back. And so you're going to see that this play was a little disrupted by Angelo Volamino. He's going to push his his blocker back in and then make that little trip up to let Justin Johns clean up the tackle. Yeah, and Gomes needed to cut back inside. He's not able to try to get the edge there Just to bring up third down and 11. Three wide receivers line up on the far side of the field. One on the near side for McGowan. Man in motion, Tate Beachy. McGowan, flag is thrown. Past the middle of the field is complete. Caught by Jalen Washington, but Two flags are thrown, and I think we might be getting holding on Westminster offensively. Going over to Washington and Jefferson, see if they want to accept the penalty. It would be fourth down. It looks like the penalty will be Personal thrown. foul, chop block. Number 55 and one of the offense. His penalty's declined. Fourth down. The reason why you're seeing those cut blocks is because you see that the pass rush is getting a little too overwhelming for this Westminster offense, so they got to re resort to some cut blocks to give their quarterback more time. However, this was an illegal one, and then that's going to back them up. So it brings up fourth down. And it took a little bit of time for the special teams unit on either side to get out there, but it is indeed fourth. Craig Sonson is on the punt for Westminster. Anthony Rossani back deep. Sonson gets it off. High punt. And a good one at that as Rossani signals for a fair catch and grabs it at the 44-yard line. Let's take a look at some of the other PAC games that are in action today. WNJ undefeated at 2-0. Westminster at 1-1. Waynesburg at Carnegie Mellon. Not a great start to the year for the Yellow Jackets and having to face a team that's ranked in the top 25 in all D3 football. Going to be a tough challenge for Cornelius Coleman and the Yellow Jackets. Bethany at Teal. Two teams that WNJ is very familiar with early on this season. Bethany playing them last week. Teal next week's opponent. Allegheny is playing at St. Vincent. Grove City at Case Western Reserve. And today's matchup here on KDK Plus. Between the Westminster Titans and Washington and Jefferson Presidents, a 7 0 score for WJ as the Presidents have the ball on their second drive. Pistol formation once again for Pew. 
Seeing Rosati go in motion a lot, right to left, and the handoff is faked up the middle, and Rosati's right there. 45 40 yard line, he goes out of bounds. At about the 36 yard line, a great play made by Anthony Rosati. Williams brought him down. Been busy out there at the corner position as WJ has found a lot of offense in the passing game. And you're going to see Rosati consistently going back and forth between the formation because they want to see if he's locked up in man or in zone because Rosati has a great knack for finding the hole in the zone. And there you saw exactly he was wide open and then JP was able to deliver a good ball to him. Yeah, they have had a ton of success so far. Rosati now will go in motion left to right. Flag thrown though. Westminster signaling it's on the offensive we'll line. Start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. It means first down. The offensive line of W and J, and that is the case as Elijah Staub is called for the penalty. Tapped it himself, looked at the sideline, said, my bad, and will back W and J up. First down and 15. Pistol formation again for Pew. Two receivers line up each side. Holmes also in the backfield. Shoddy in motion near side. And off goes the Haas, tries to bounce it outside. Justin Haas using his speed past the 40 yard line. Stiff arms the defender, out of bounds at the 35. Strong run for Justin Haas, uses his elusiveness to escape. Nothing was there in the middle of the field and was able to bounce it out. So now we see Justin Huss. He's been consistently going up to the middle of the field, and I applaud him for that. However, he likes to use his speed. He likes to get out on the outside, and you see that he just continuously getting the outside, using his speed, and then even finishing with the run with a little stiff arm at the end. And Terry Miller, the cornerback, on the receiving end of that stiff arm, sets up second down. The scoreboard here at WJ says second down and 68. It is second down and eight. Take the hand off and throw up the middle of the field of Cernudo, but the ball was high and incomplete. Let's send it down to Robert Mangino on the sideline. Thank you very much, Austin. Coach Sirianni immediately after that touchdown took over the first and second teamers over to the bench, immediately started drawing up plays on the whiteboard, left the defense to his defensive coordinator. They are committed, and Jake Pugh running with abandon. I saw that hit over here at the seven. He has all kind of attitude in this game. He sure has so far as Pew looks deep down the field. And the pass is incomplete over the head of Jacob Makosko. That's a smart play by Pew. Not trying to force it. We have a deep comeback on the outside with Makosko. Saw that the corner was driving on, on the ball. Had to throw it above just to avoid a turnover. That sets up fourth down and eight. Ball pretty much in no man's land at the 35. So despite being fourth and long, W and J at the moment looks up to go for it. Pugh lines up in the shotgun. Holmes the back, now takes another step back. Wonder if he's going to get a pooch punt. That is the case as Pugh punts it inside the 10 and it bounces into the end zone. Paduzzi tried to save it from becoming a touchback, but that is the case and will be placed at the 20 yard line. Westminster so far this season, one and one. All the games in PAC play, 11 teams in the conference all games are conference games this year after last year the first game was not counted as a conference game so 17 to 7 the loss to grove city a tough grove city team to begin the season and then 28 to 7 the win against teal teal a team that westminster handled pretty well but at the same time when we talked to scott benzel he kind of spoke pretty highly of teal and how that program is really starting to find itself a little bit and is improved and he was able to see in that matchup some of those instances how the Tomcats are better in 2023. Hanock goes up the middle. Gomes doesn't get much. Maybe a yard to the 21. And another tackle by Avery Keith. He's relentless to the ball. He's consistently getting to the ball carry even when he's on the opposite edge. You notice that Dawson Dietz is slowly getting double teamed on every single play. That leaves room for Avery Keith to make some more plays and really pad his stats in this game. That's going to come down to probably to a fourth quarter game. Sets up second down and eight. Goes as a carry of two. Three receivers line up near side of the field, one far side. Westminster stayed committed to the running game early on as McGowan throws near side of the field. Has a man open pass, is caught. Running past the 40 yard line. Put on the Jets. Tate Beachy into the end zone for the Westminster touchdown. But there are flags thrown at the line of scrimmage. Two markers down. As Beach is printed his way. Offense number 56 and 72. Coming back. 
Main second down. Would have gone as a 78-yard score from Ty McGowan to Tate Beachy. I absolutely love this play, the inside release fade. You notice that we have Beachy on the inside, one-on-one -on -one coverage because they have trips out to the right side. Let's him get past the defense. However, this is coming back with that cut block, which is continuously from that pass rush, continuously from that run defense on the front lines for the presidents. And very unfortunate for Westminster. Had everything that it could have wanted on that play. Your dynamic, speedy, young receiver in Beachy, a sophomore at 5'10", 150, just running past the entire W&J defense in the secondary. And penalties being costly on the first drive as well as this one. And we even see just... A little glimpse of McGowan's arm, and he's a special talent on the outside. Here's Mike Sirianni. Happy with that last penalty. Head coach of the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. His 809 winning percentage ranks him slightly ahead of Clemson's Dabo Sweeney with an 802 winning percentage and Alabama's Nick Saban. How about the Alabama coach with an 800 winning percentage, but WNJ's is better at 809. McGowan's pass is caught. The flag moved the ball back to the 12-yard line. Beachy on the receiving end of this one again. Put it at the 15. Still going to set up third down and long, needing to get to the 30-yard line to convert. We see a second down and long. We just see a little safe play here, getting the ball out on a little bubble screen. Didn't really get the blocks that he needed on the outside. Was able to turn up and get as many yards as possible. We're still going to see a very long third down. And the playbook kind of slims down when you get in this position. What type of play calls are in the playbook in a position like this where pretty much on that second down play, you just want to get a couple more yards to make it a little bit more manageable. You want to find if you have any sort of one-on-one -on -one route here. However, um, WJ is in their prevent defense. As McGowan throws middle of the field, pass is caught short of the sticks. Tackle made by Zakai Simmons. Reception made by Chevy Dawson, the tight end. It'll bring up fourth down. And then McGowan's just looking for anything he can see. He sees Chevy Dawson, who makes a great catch Climbs the ladder a little bit. However, it's still short the, of the sticks that he needs to gain to. So Westminster will have to punt again. That touchdown that was called back. Anthony Rosati's back deep. Low snap. It bounces. And a high kick, but doesn't go very far at all. Bounces at the 40-yard line of Westminster and goes out of bounds. So it's been trouble for Westminster on special teams, penalties calling back a touchdown. Things that are not going the Titans way at the moment. And you just see that WJ has all the momentum possible. Anytime a punter fumbles a snap, they're just taught just to kick it, get it out of their leg as far as possible. Even though it didn't really produce a lot of yards, they still concerned it from getting blocked. Craig Sonson just tried to get rid of it before WJ collapsed in on him. Sets up the presidents in great field position. Leading 7 to nothing. 3.54 to go in this first quarter of play. Jake Pugh hands it off. Joy Volpatti running far side of the field. Stiff arms the first tackler at the 40. Volpatti brought down at the 38. That was Williams again that tried to bring him down in his cornerback position. Dylan Sleeve, the sophomore at 6'1", eventually did make the tackle. And you see that you're going to consistently see a matchup, a mix, mix match of Volpatti and Hust. However, they're very similar running styles. Like to get to the edge, like to use their strong frame, and then get as many yards as possible. That was 33, Sebastian DiNardo in the defensive line that Paul Patty eventually, at least at first, got away from. Only goes as a few yards on the play, set up second down and eight. Pew looking middle of the field, now it's flushed out. Pew. First down catch made by John Panuzzi. Gets to the 29. Pick up of nine. And a WNJ first down. And that's what makes Pew's game so difficult. As soon as he escapes the pocket, you see all the attention go towards him. And then Paduzzi's able to make a man miss and get to that first down marker and just get out of bounds. WNJ slowing it a little bit offensively now. A very up tempo offense, though, that wants to keep the defense guessing and. Not making too many substitutions. As well, Patty gets a handoff up the middle. Well, Patty gets to the 25. And I'm loving, about four. I'm loving the the mix match of run and pass. 
They're not abandoning the run game because they know they're getting the push. And you see that's slowly opening up those easy throws on the un underside of the pass game. And now we're going to see some deep shots being taken later on in this game. Really have not seen many shots at all for WNJ. Something that the presidents like to do fairly often. Saudi goes in motion to the near side of the field. Few fakes the handoff and throws. Pass caught by Paduzzi. Paduzzi past the 15, spins his way to the 10. Another WJ first down. Mark him down at the 11, so a yard short of being first and goal. But another chance for WJ to try and strike as Williams makes the tackle. And I know WJ likes to take their shots downfield, but however, they're super, super comfortable with seeing these underneath routes open up. And then they're able to, it's basically like another run play for them. Yeah. They're able to get the ball out quick and the flat in the slant and then you're going to see that this is gradually going to make this game a lot harder to stop for the Westminster defense. Get your playmakers out in space to be able to run and make plays. As Pew sends Versati in motion again, comes back to the near side, takes the handoff, looking towards the end zone, the pass is caught. What a great grab by Jacob McCosco in the end zone for six. Pew to McCosco from 11 yards out. There is a flag thrown though. Down field. Offense number 63, five yard penalty. Remains first down. And it's the second touchdown of the game that is called back because of a penalty. And we see here a little RPO action fig. Let Jake Pugh get out of the pocket and just loft one right up to Jake McCosco, who's his big frame. Now we see that coming back, unfortunately, but a great play designed by Sirianni. Yeah, and that penalty, see it saw one for Westminster, now one for W and J, wiping out scoring plays. I don't know, place the ball. Right outside the 15 at the 16 yard line. First down and 15. Pew in the shotgun. Volpatti the back. Roll out near side. Pew's pass caught by Volpatti. Pass the 10. Volpatti out of bounds at about the 8. Got the penalty yards back and more. We see that this Westminster defense is not letting them take those shots into the end zone like they just saw early on. Now we're going to see Volpatti underneath just making as much yards as he can and just finishing in those tough runs. We're consistently seeing these running backs and even Jake Pugh finishing these runs and just starting to wear down on these Westminster defense players. And it's been a lot of short plays, quick plays to keep this a long and methodical drive. Cernuto, the tight end, goes in motion. Hand off to Volpatti. Volpatti is met right away. Able to pick up maybe a yard on the play. But a strong tackle made on the defensive front. As Carter Chin makes the tackle. Senior, 6'1", 228 pounds from Grove City, Pennsylvania. Chin with 12 tackles on the year entering today. A sack, four tackles for loss. It's a Westminster team that entered today with four players having a sack, five sacks total. No interceptions, though, for the Titans defensively. Pew in the shotgun. Two receivers line up far side. Pew rolls out that way. Dumps it off to Cernudo. Cernudo is in the end zone again. Second touchdown of the day for Zach Cernudo. One rushing, one on the receiving end is WNJ strike before the end of the first quarter. Cernudo is that guy they look for in the red zone. And like I said earlier on in the game, they really want to convert in the red zone. And the only way they can do that is by consistently going to Cernudo, who falls underneath a little shovel pass by Pew, perfectly timed, and then see that push by the offensive line getting his man into the end zone. And Westminster is trying to take away the effect of John Paduzzi. And other playmakers for WNJ are stepping up. Extra point is up and good from Ricky Hunter. 14 to nothing. Washington and Jefferson jumps in front with 14.4 remaining here in the first quarter of play. I'm Austin Bechtel, joined alongside Alex Terrett and Robert Mangino down on the sideline. As the president's a perfect 2-0 to start out this season. And W and J, in blowout fashion, have outscored opponents 93 to seven. 51 to nothing against St. Vincent, 42 to seven against Be against Bethany. Mangino, what do you have? You, you got to love it with Sonerdo getting the ball, getting the opportunity to score some touchdowns, even though he is not the key guy. You know, he's not Volpatti, he's not Pew, but he's scoring the touchdowns, giving the big man the opportunity to show what he has today. And he's been really effective in really every avenue that Washington and Jefferson has asked him to line up in. He's a solid blocker as well and has really just brought it in every way that he can today. 
He's that utility guy. He runs. He, he blocks. He can even play quarterback. He does everything that this offense wants. And you, you mentioned earlier that the Westminster defense is trying to take away the effects of Paduzzi. However, you're going to see more and more guys like Pew, like Cernudo, and even McCosco stepping up in a big way. WNJ won the last meeting 17-14 to 14 last year. As the kickoff is away, Elijah Grayer back deep, fielded at the 10. Grayer past the 20, takes a big hit at the 27-yard line, balls out. W&J appears to have fallen on it. And the Presidents do come away with the football and force another turnover. And that's Tanner Volpatti, one of the oldest parts of this defense. He's a consistent captain. Tanner Volpatti just has so much strength, and as soon as he sees the opportunity, he strikes. Big hit right here on the kick returner forces the ball to come out. Now the Presidents are in great field position here to score just before this first quarter ends. So WNJ able to force the turnover. One of the first major, major significant plays that the Presidents have made on special teams that special teams have really been dominated by WNJ. Mostly to the fault of Westminster in some errors that it is made in that avenue as pointing back and forth who jumped first in the neutral zone, and it appears we'll go on WNJ. Full start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Elijah Staub with another penalty at left tackle. From Hanover, Pennsylvania, sophomore at 6'3", 295 pounds. You have all this adrenaline build up from that big play. Gives it a little jumpy on the offensive line. Eager to go back out there and block for your guys, try to score again. Stop the youngest member of this offensive line starting for the Presidents. A bunch of juniors and seniors. He's a sophomore with two other seniors, Cazera and Fertini, as well as Cullen and Nekotra. That's the handoff up the middle. Dustin Huss takes it near side of the field. Takes it to the 15-yard line, another first down before Matthew Ranza brings him down. I'm loving the way this offensive line is blocking. Little down blocks here. That yeah. is the end of the first quarter. Little down block here by the little pulling guard action. And then you see that Huss is getting those running lanes really early. You're going to see his yards balloon, balloon up in the next quarter. W and J leads it 14 to nothing. Looking to strike again as the first quarter comes to an end. We'll go to the second here on KDKA+. Plus. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high-quality product. 14 to nothing at Cameron Stadium as Washington and Jefferson leads Westminster. And I said it was another turnover for WNJ Force this year. That's the sixth of the season through two games and now a quarter. Handoff up the middle and ooh, looks like one of the WNJ players got rolled up at the very end of that. Rosati on the run by Ray Holmes, but good to see Rosati get up. No pain there as ball was carried by Holmes down to the 11. Fortunately, that's what happens when your receiver blocking on the edge. Your back's to the ball. All of a sudden, the running back runs straight in your back. It's got to hurt, right? Pretty bad. 
Brings up second down and six. Cernudo lines up near side of the field out wide. Now motioned into the backfield. Take the hand off the bull Patty. Pugh looking towards the end zone. And the pass is intercepted. A flag is thrown at the end of it, though. Pugh would put his hands on his helmet and was really upset with himself as the ball was intercepted. Personal foul. Roughing 25. Half the distance to the goal line on the first game. But roughing the passer on Westminster. Doesn't appear that the Titans even know that that's the case at the moment. After the ball was intercepted in the end zone, and the Titans thought they were getting a big stop, but the roughing the passer penalty is going to bring it back. This is one downfall to Jake Pugh's game. He tries to make so many plays with his legs. He consistently runs to the outside. However, he has to throw across his body to fit into a tight window, and that's where we see some mistakes happen. It doesn't happen very often for Pugh, but that, in that case it did. I think it was intercepted by Bryce Butler, the free safety. Didn't catch the number, but if you do want to see more of Bryce Butler, you will see him at halftime. He is our featured interview today. We talked to Bryce at PAC Media Day early this year. Great to talk to the junior safety from Farrell, Pennsylvania. Went to Farrell High School. So Pew and the offense get another chance. Have the distance of the goal ball at the six. Pew fake the handoff, carries it into the end zone. Pew takes a big hit. Ball comes out at the half yard line. Don't think he got in, not being signaled. That's the case. As Pew took a big shot after the roughing the passer on the last play. And couldn't hear on the ref mic what the call was. As Pugh is coming off the field, it will be marked a little bit short. And the Presidents in a jumbo formation with Cernudo ready to take the snap. Cernudo fakes the toss to Volpatti. Cernudo fights his way into the end zone. Another flag is thrown, though. Right at the snap, and it looks like it'll be declined and being outside. So a little bit of problems with the ref mic there, as it is offsides on Westminster. Cernudo. Third time's a charm. Every time he's had the chance, he's run it in or caught a pass to get into the end zone. All three touchdowns to his credit. 20 to nothing. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and the kick from Hunter is up and good. Washington and Jefferson adds on. And for Westminster, you really, really got to be harping on the fact that there's been a ton of opportunities for you to either stop W and J or get the ball back. It's been turnovers, it's been penalties, and when they had a chance, interception in the end zone, I think the passer took it away. Just a, an unfortunate scenario for the Westminster Titans. However, they know they can get these turnovers. They know how to distract Pew and able to get these interceptions. They even forced a few fumbles at the end that they didn't recover. However, when you see Pew running tough like he always has all game, and then all of a sudden you know that the Westminster defense is going to retaliate with that tough hit. Um, got to protect himself a little bit more because you want you don't want to see him come out with an unfortunate injury. So 21 to nothing, W and J now leads. 13, 34 to go here in the second quarter of play. It's been all presidents. This has been a matchup recently that is. Really been dominated by Westminster. We'll get to that in a moment. The kickoff goes inside the five and throughout at the three yard line. Taken to the 20. Dreyer doesn't get very far. That one's carried by Brian Gomes, rather. And Gomes only takes it out to the 21. So this is where you're going to see that the Westminster offense really needs to sustain a drive here. They need to come out with some sort of points. Down three scores at just the start of the second quarter. They need to get something on offense because the defense is consistently getting tired with these long drives by the WJ offense. Westminster won the matchup in 2016, 16 to 10. Won in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 until WJ broke that streak last season on October 8th, 17 to 14. At Westminster, handoff goes up the middle. Carry for about five yards for Gomes. Brought down by Zakai Simmons. Second down and five. And that's a great way to get this drive started. Ryan Gomes is the guy you want to get 
in the middle of the field, running downhill. A little bit of a push from the offensive line. Um, we want to see these consistently going to the run offense. You have so much time to work with. You just can't end the drive with no points. And Westminster not abandoning the run and try and not panicking at all despite the scoreboard. McGowan goes under center. Comes the back. I'll hand it to him again. This time nowhere to go. Broken up right away by Washington and Jefferson. Up the middle, Justin Johns. Avery Keith was also there on the stop. Justin Johns is such the big centerpiece of this WJ defense. You'll see he just follows the ball so well, makes plays such downhill, and then delivers big hits. You're going to see him make even more of an impact later on in this game. Brings up third down and six. This is a Westminster team that throughout the first two games of the season has only averaged 17 and a half points per game. On the opposite end for Washington and Jefferson, 46 and a half. Westminster needs to break their point average today to have a chance to come back. McGowan's pass, incomplete, but a flag thrown. Was looking for Jalen Washington near side of the field. And Carson Laconi looks like he just defensively jumped into Washington way too early. Laconi was definitely all over that route. However, he just coming from behind. Pass interference. Defense number 16. Spot foul. Automatic first down. And that's an easy play. It's an easy call by the official. And now this is exactly what Westminster needs. They need to get that extra push from that penalty. And now they're in a little bit of a rhythm here. They want to see if they can continuously move the ball down. Spot foul penalty puts the ball at the 35. First down and 10 for McGowan in the shotgun. And once again, whistles for the snap. This one signaling false start. Offense number 18, five-yard penalty. First down. Goes on Tate Beachy, sophomore wide receiver, who is isolated to the near side of the field. It's a little bit too antsy to get going here. Westminster just trying to do anything to get on the WJ side of the field. What they teach you as a receiver is to never listen to the snap count. Just look straight at the ball. You're so far away from the ball sometimes. That's just better just to look at it, and that way you can limit those offsides penalties. One receiver lines up each side for McGowan. He'll hand it off. Gomes up the middle. Again, not that much there. Only goes for about two yards on the play. Tackle made by Angelo Volomino for the presidents at outside linebacker. You're going to watch this play by Angelo Volomino. He's playing on the outside directly over the receiver, and then they had him on outside linebacker blitz going straight to the ball carrier, and he was right at the right place at the right time. So only getting one yard after the penalty. It brings up second down and 14. An empty backfield for McGowan. Three receivers far side, two to the near side. Four man rush for W and J. Bringing pressure. McGowan is able to get it away. Pass goes out of bounds, but a flag is thrown right where the hit was delivered. That was Volomino who delivered it. And a lot of yelling out there on the field is it's going to go holding on Westminster here and back up the offense. Third down. So WJ elects to decline the penalty. And I mean, why not? Play that went as an incompletion will be third down and 14. And for a Westminster offense that has not gotten that much going, what do you call here? You just need to look for the middle of the field. They're going to consistently play back with the corners because they don't want to let up the big play and just let their defensive line, their inside linebackers, continuously get to the quarterback. You need to get something quick out here um, and try to make a make a big play, force a few broken tackles to get that first down. Gomes in the backfield with the gallon standing to his right. They'll split him out and throw it that way, far side. Gomes dropped the football, picks it up, and it's not a backwards pass. Ruled incomplete. And it'll take the Westminster offense off the field again and force the punt. W and J will get the offense back out on the field again. Anthony Rosati is back deep standing at his own 30. But just nothing has worked for Westminster offensively. And if it has, it's been taken back by penalties. Exactly. We They even got that kickstart with the pass interference call. However, they just can't complete it to the receivers. They're, the receivers are having a tough time holding on to the ball, especially the running back. Um, but we're going to see that they're going to have to switch to something different in the second half. 
Punt is away. High punt. Good kick. Rusadi signals for a fair catch at the 32. 11.02 to go in the first half of play. 21 to nothing. Washington and Jefferson lead Westminster. We'll be back. Official timeout. After this timeout, here on KDK Plus. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready? Ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars take on the Bell Vernon Leopards in a battle of the Mon Valley Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? Looking to escape a dead-end job? We can help. Apply at two men in a truck today for a good job that can become a great career. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. I can binge one more episode. Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. Back at Cameron Stadium in Washington, Pennsylvania, as the Presidents lead it 21 to nothing against the Titans. Handoff goes up the middle. Pyle pushing forward. W and J at the point of attack is one in the trenches. Good carry on the play for W and J's Kobe DeRosa, his first carry. You're seeing this push by the offensive line, which consistently against these types of teams like Westminster, Carnegie Mellon, they usually don't get that initial push. However, against this Westminster defense, they're having a great job um, really finding those early down yards. Goes as a gain of six, second down and four. Ball at the 39-yard line of W and J. Pistol formation for Pew. Two receivers lined up near side, one far side. Take the handoff, looking deep down the field for McCosco, but overthrown by a couple of yards. Costco was pointing, maybe trying to get a flag on the play as defensively Terry Miller was in coverage from Titusville, Florida. You're going to watch McCosco here on a little bit of a deep route. He kind of stutters a little bit. He's trying to set up a little double move, trying to get that separation. He gets a little bit of separation at the end. However, just a little too overthrown from Pew. Brings up third down and four. Similar type of formation with McCosco on the near side. I've not seen a lot of John Paduzzi. He lines up on the far side. Isolated that way with two high safeties. Saudi goes in motion. Near side of the far side of the formation. Quick pass, incomplete. Off the hands of Raymond Holmes. Right at the sticks. And was almost tipped into an interception. That's just tough, such a touch, tough catch uh, by Raymond Holmes there. Just trying to get it over the middle. Because you have that defender that's breaking ball right down to, to Holmes. He's able to just jump up. However, it's a little too high and just gets a little tip, which could have been very dangerous for this president offense. Yeah, said how that could have been picked off. Matthew Ranza was probably about a step away from it. Dove for the ball and fell a little bit short. So for the first time, Washington and Jefferson will punt. High kick. And taken at the 43. Brought down immediately by the presidents. Strong play made by Tanner Patty. And we want to thank our sponsors for being a part of this D3 college football season on KKA Plus, including Washington Health System, Voodoo Brewing Company, Two Men in a Truck, GBU Life, and Leeway Athletics. We really thank you for your support, being a part of our team here in 2023 for our first season covering PAC football on KKA Plus. To bring out McGowan in the offense at the 26, 10.05 remaining in this first half of play. First down and 10 at the 26. McGowan pitches it to Holmes. 
Gomes, rather. Still going past the 40, 45. Gomes past midfield. Past the 40, Gomes. Stiff arm at the 30-yard line and eventually is dragged down by Simmons. Dragged out of bounds. Strong run by Ryan Gomes. Fifth-year senior from Tampa, Florida. I'll tell you what. The best way to get the coach excited about you on the outside as a receiver is to block. You see we have Tate Beachy on the outside really making that block. Let Gomes really streak down the field and get a huge splash play. They need to ignite this offense. Biggest play of the day for Westminster. And a strong run by Ryan Gomes. Ender today with 121 yards rushing, two touchdowns at his longest run of the season. McGowan pitches it out. Running with it, a flag is thrown at the t past the 12, 20 yard line. Justin Johns ended up making the tackle, but looks like this one might be coming back. So it does go as a first down. No signal for what the flag was. Maybe just an inadvertent flag. You see a little option pitch out to Gomes. Gomes making some tough defenders miss, and then now we're set up nicely in the red zone. And off goes up the middle, W and J defensively right there. Avery Keith, Zach Valentine defensively. They've seen a lot of big runs from this Westminster offense. And now Zach Valentine just pushing his way through that offensive line and really disrupting that early, early run to set up in the red zone. Now push him back a little bit, get him behind the sticks. We're going to see what Westminster does to respond. Elijah Grayer was the one who carried the last two plays for Westminster on the handoffs. So Grayer seeing a couple of carries to spell Gomes after the long run. McGowan with time, pass is incomplete, looking for Chevy Dawson, took a hit at the very end of it. We'll set up third down. It's just such a tough pass for McGowan right there. You see Chevy Dawson just wide open around the outside, being followed by his defender. That's one of those that you need to have completed because that could be an easy touchdown and get this Westminster offense back on track. He beat Justin Johns and had open space in front of him as well. Could have made for an important play for Westminster, even to get a big chunk of yards to make this more third and manageable or pick it up. Now an empty backfield for McGowan. Three receivers near side, two to the far side. Big rush from W and J. McGowan gets it away, passes caught. Out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. The reception made by Jalen Washington. And it'll bring up fourth down and three. Decision time for Westminster and down 21. Why not go for it? Great route by Washington here to lose his defender. However, you would like to see him just not run out of bounds right away and just pull back and try and get a little bit of a bigger gain to make it an easier fourth down. But the special teams unit is coming out onto the field for Westminster. And as that was the case, timeout. Westminster. the Titans timeout. have used the timeout. So first time out used by Westminster. First time out used by either side. Send it down to Mangino. Hey, Austin, when you look at the game so far, uh, Scott Benzel, the head coach of the Westminster Titans, looking at this, has to be thinking that, listen, this is all about mental mistakes at this point. You have penalties on key plays. You have turnovers, those kind of miscues. It isn't as though they're being so dominated by Washington and Jefferson that they're out of this game. If they can convert this fourth down, score a touchdown, get it within two scores, and then clean up the mental side of things, they can make a game of this. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly. It is just miscues that have taken away a touchdown, a fumble on special teams. There's just things, an interception in the end zone that was called back on a roughing the passer penalty. Westminster has made some plays, but it's also done a lot to hurt themselves. Exactly, and they're not out of this game. It's 21 nothing. I know, early on. It's the halfway through the second quarter. They have so much time, and even they're in the red zone now. They just need to come away with some sort of points, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. However, a touchdown really brings them back in this game. So after sending the special teams unit out there, calling the timeout, the offense returns onto the field. Big play here for Westminster. Fourth down and three. Three receivers line up far side, one on the near side. McGowan has time. Pass middle of the field. It's caught at the six-yard line, spinning down to the five. Ball might have come out at the end of it. W and J 
running with it. Avery Keith, and it will be President Football. Avery Keith on the fumble recovery. Westminster converted on fourth down, but fighting for extra yards. As Mangino said, the mental mistakes, another turnover as the Titans give it away. Chevy Dawson coughs it up. That's the exact play they wanted in that situation. Chevy Dawson, one-on-one, -on -one, finding the zone and then making the grab, but still fighting for yards, which you like to see from a player like Chevy Dawson because he's a bigger body. However, just a little too much longer, and then allows Avery Keith to come back for the fumble. And in a situation like that, you got the first down. You're trailing 21 to nothing. Don't try to do too much, right? Exactly, but they're also trying to make a play. You're down 21 nothing. Why not be more aggressive? Pew hands it off. Well, Patty. Huss, rather. My apologies. Tries to bounce it outside. Only gets a couple. Or he's brought down by senior linebacker Evan Lewis at 5'9", 185. Not really much for Huss there in the middle of the field. Just trying to uh, get as many yards as possible, pushing forward. Offensive line was a little bit um, lax on their blocks there. Cernudo goes in motion. Left side of the formation. Pistol for Pew. Throws it over to Cernudo. Cernudo drops it, though. That's a 10-yard line. W and J began this drive at the 7 after the fumble recovery from Keith. If you're Sirianni and you see Cernudo drop that pass, just remember he has three of your touchdowns early on. <laughs> so one one mistake. Yeah, he's allowed to have one mistake here and there. Third down and nine. Ball to W and J8. Shotgun for Pew. Three receivers on the near side, including Cernudo. Pew looking near side. Pressure collapsed in. The Rosati's able to make the catch at the 18. Good strike from Pew to Rosati. Just gets enough to pick up a first. And Sirianni loves this matchup with Rosati. Um, right on the inside of the trips formation. Is able to just make a man miss. Sit over the ball. A nice, easy play for Pew, and he able to lead him away from the defender to avoid the big collision. And how about Pew using his eyes to shift the defenders? Looked probably at four different receivers on that play before eventually coming back to Rosati. Handoff goes to Volpatti, bounces it outside. Volpatti taken down inbounds. Tackle made by Matthew Petruzzi. We're seeing Sirianni just consistently mixing up these play calls. He's so far calling a great game. Not abandoning the run play, even though they're having so much success with the pass game, and just consistently keeping the Westminster defense on their toes. This Westminster defense has been out there for a while in this first half. So the offense really got something going on that last drive, but Fumble gave it back to the Presidents. Take the handoff, Pew rolling out and is taken down. Sack made by Evan Lewis, collapsing in on Jake Pew as Westminster. Gets home against Pew for the first time on the sack. You'll see Evan Lewis at his outside linebacker position on a design blitz, and his eyes were seeing red every single time, and he was able to make that huge play on Pew from the back. Pew didn't even see him. There were a couple guys collapsing in on Pew. If Lewis wasn't the one to get to him, a lot of other different options there. Strong rush by Westminster to help set up third down and 11. Ball at the 18 of W and J. The receiver's far side, one of the near side is McCosco. Pew looking far side, middle of the field. Wide open, Peduzzi makes the catch of the 35. Past the 40, 45 in midfield. Peduzzi off to the races, down inside the 40-yard line into Westminster territory. Another first down and a great play made from Pew to find a wide open Peduzzi and let him do the rest. And also you mentioned we haven't said Peduzzi's name very much today. However, now we see Rosati getting a lot of catches. We, they start to see the key on Rosati. Peduzzi's wide open and uses his speed and makes a huge chunk play for the Presidents when they were kind of struggling on third down. Matthew Ranza made the tackle from his safety position to help stop what could have been a touchdown. Ball at the 36. Pew in the shotgun. Hands it off to Volpatti. Volpatti past the 35-30 and out of bounds. Right at the 30-yard line. Good carry of six. Just an easy, easy run for Troy Volpatti, getting the outside, making a second down. Very, very easy with this high-powered WJ offense. I'm interested to see if they go back to the run game or if they do with one of their comfortable short, pouts, short routes to Paduzzi or McCosco on he, the outside. He's a really quick runner. Very quick, very quick. Lines up in the pistol. 
Versati goes in motion. Now we'll check over to the sideline. Cernudo also in the back in the backfield. Peduzzi lines up on the far side of the field. McCosco near side. And up to Volpatti again. Second straight run, and he's taken down right away. There's Evan Lewis again, the outside linebacker. Senior 5'9", 185 pounds, went to Elizabeth Forward High School in the WPIL. Sets up third down and six. We see Evan Lewis just downhill run straight to the ball carrier, not falling for any fakes from Volpatti. Able to not, um, able to stop Volpatti on that play. We'll call it third and four, rather, maybe a long five. Similar type of formation for W and J, and the president's want to use a timeout. timeout. 3.57 left in Second the first half of play as W and J leads it 21 to nothing and looking to strike for more. As this Friday on Kitty Game Plus, we present the Bell Vernon Leopards and the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Bell Vernon with five star prospect Quentin Martin has committed to play at Penn State. One of the top players in the entire state and in the entire country. Going up against Sean Sullivan, wide receiver and punt returner. Very elusive, shifty player for the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Catch it all in the Steel City High School Football Showcase. Presented by UPMC Sports Medicine, 7 o'clock this upcoming Friday on KDKA+. Take a look at the W&J record. Unblemished through two games. Both being conference games as well. 51 to nothing against St. Vincent and Bethany. 42 to 7. Both road games. It's the first one at home for the Presidents. Last year's season started out against John Carroll. Ended up being a home victory for Washington and Jefferson. And a bowl victory as well as what ended your WJ career, Alex, last season. It was a great way to end it for sure. Against Hobart College. The offense just didn't stop that game. And then you see that was a great translator over into what we see this season with Huge, huge victories, of mar a margin of victory for W&J over the first two weeks. Once this offense gets into a rhythm, it's just smooth sailing. Exactly. And then you don't see this offense huddle up at all. Everything is called by signals, so it keeps that fast pace. And able to, if you get in the rhythm, it's hard to stop. Empty backfield for Pugh. Peduzzi and McCosco line up near side of the field. Another check over to the sideline. Signals being delivered. W and J in no rush with five seconds on the play clock. Pugh comes back near side to McCosco. Ball is out. Don't think he had possession of it. And it is ruled incomplete. McCosco, you can tell the frustration. As it is ruled incomplete on third down. Trying to set up that screen. Upset with himself, he was not able to corral it. You're going to see this a lot with Sirianni. He likes to do slip screens. He likes to load up the left side and then go back to McCosco on the right side on a slip screen, try and get that one-on-one -on -one matchup and allow their playmakers to get out in space and then make a play. And Westminster snuffed that out pretty well. Didn't look like it was going to go for much. And the offense does stay out on the field. Ball to 31. We saw a pew with a little pooch punt the last time WNJ was in this type of position. Ball to 35 that time. And Westminster is taking a timeout. With 3.51 to go. 21 to nothing. The president's lead. Fourth down coming up next here on KDKA+. Plus. just a job. This is our mission. Providing great patient care. Delivering babies. Healing hearts. Detecting cancer early. Stitching wounds. And holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years. Washington Health System. My name is Loretta, and this is Special Olympics Pennsylvania. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is competition. 
Special Olympics, Pennsylvania is leadership. Special Olympics, Pennsylvania is life changing. Special Olympics, Pennsylvania is unified. Special Olympics, Pennsylvania is inclusion. Back here on fourth down as WNJ appears to be going for it. Brings Huston into the backfield. Pew, middle of the field, incomplete. Was looking for McCosco again. Dropped the ball on third down. And the pass incomplete. Would have been good enough to pick it up. McCosco's second straight drop. It's a great play call on a fourth and short. Fourth and mid, fourth and four. Um, however, McCosco just looking upfield, trying to get too many yards. Instead, doesn't focus on catching the ball, and it goes off his leg. And Alex, we were talking during the break. You were a little bit surprised that W&J ended up going for it there. I was very surprised because I saw Pew um, just a slight farther back than he normally is. Um, I usually like to see them do that punt when they're uh, backed up a little bit, fourth and four, just to make sure that the Westminster defense doesn't able to get their returners in there. So after the turnover on downs, McGowan sets up in the shotgun. Defensive line shifts for the Presidents. Take the handoff, lots of time for McGowan. Throw it deep down the field. He has a man open looking for Dawson. And the pass is incomplete. Not able to corral it as he went to the ground. Bruno Fabricki helped to break it up. This was absolutely a great ball by McGowan. Putting it right on his, his receiver. However, Fabricki, who's trailing a little bit, uses his hands, goes through the ball, and able to make a really huge breakup that would have led the Westminster Titans to have a huge gain and set up very well towards the end of the second quarter. Dawson is one of the main targets for Westminster that we've seen McGowan target a ton. I've not seen a lot of Jalen Royal Island, the sophomore from Youngstown, Ohio, leading receiver coming into the game today. He's been covered by Fabricki pretty well in man coverage. Pass dumped off. Gomes makes the catch. Pass to 35 and Gomes takes it. Right near the first down marker. Needing to get to the 41, he gets to the 38. He'll set up third down and short. Aaron Carruthers made the tackle. That's exactly what you want to see from this Westminster offense. You see all the pass rush, all the blitzing linebackers get it out quick and able to make a huge, huge gain, which sets up a third and short. Ball out the 38. McGowan now goes under center. Hands it off. Gomes fights his way for a first down. Gets to the 42 and moves the chains. Gomes does a great job going downhill. I'm surprised they went to the run play on the third and four. However, it was successful for them. And now midfield-ish, they can see if they can start opening the playbook up, maybe taking some shots downfield. However, you can take your time here. You have over two and a half minutes left to try and get a score. Two timeouts as well. And out goes up the middle to Gomes. Gomes open running room past the 45 and falls forward to the 47. Another solid carry of six. We're starting to see Westminster get a little bit more push as Simmons eventually made the tackle from his safety spot against this WNJ front. They're going back to what they know best, and that's run the football. WNJ ran a couple players off the field pretty much at the last minute. That is now a check to the sideline for McGowan. McGowan entered today's game 17-30. 289 yards, two touchdowns. No interceptions yet this year. McGowan tosses it over. Very close to a first down. Looks like it will be the case. As Justin Johns makes the tackle on the run for Jake Mull. Justin Johns does a great job at the end of this run, making the tackle, but also keeping him in bounds. Now that you can see that the Westminster office needs to speed up, if they want to continue to move the ball down the field. Elijah Grayer was on the carry, my apologies, rather. Number 19 for Westminster. As McGowan has plenty of time. Step up in the pocket, throws middle of the field, and the pass is caught. Dawson running with it past the 30. A flag is thrown at the end of it. Great grab by Chevy Dawson. Made a man miss. It looked like there was confusion right away by both sides as to who caught the football. And for W and J, who to tackle right away. Two receivers were standing right next to each other for Westminster before Dawson went up and grabbed it. And now huddling, the, hud the officials will huddle together at the 25. No signal yet as to what the call is. Came at the very end of the play. 
personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Let's Defense go. number 37. Let's go. After this is three goal, automatic first down. Sean Berardino is called for the unnecessary roughness penalty. We'll move the ball into great field position for Westminster inside the red zone. Unfortunately, on the defensive side of the ball, whenever a player is held up and you're continuously poking at the ball, trying to force a fumble, sometimes you get caught with that unnecessary roughness just by being a little too aggressive after the whistle. Tate Beachy was also there standing right next to Chevy Dawson before Dawson eventually hauled it in. First down at the 13. Take the handoff and McGowan rolls back, looking towards the end zone, incomplete. Ball out of bounds, was looking for Peachy. Second think, down. I think there was a little bit of miscommunication between McGowan and Beachy. Um, McGeechy, Beachy looked like he was blocking downfield. However, um, just a safe play by McGowan just to throw it out of bounds um, and live to fight another down. Didn't seem like he was in any possession, any position to be able to make a reception on the play either. Didn't expect the ball in his direction. Jalen Royal Island lines up on the far side of the field. Ball on the right side hash. Shotgun on second down and 10. McGowan looking towards the end zone. And incomplete again. Was looking Royal Island's direction. Covers there by Carson Laconi. So two incompletions rolling out the same way. And both pretty much thrown out of bounds at the exact same spot. Now you're seeing WJ is kind of laying off the quarterback a little bit, a little off the pass rush, and they're blitzing linebackers. They're just pulling everybody back into coverage, letting McGowan have the time, but not giving him anywhere to go. Third down and 10. Is this two down territory for Westminster if they're able to get some yards to go for it on fourth? I would say yes. However, any field goal, any sort of points, just to keep that zero off the board going into halftime. 117 to go. Two timeouts remaining for Westminster. McGowan with time, step up into the pocket, starting to feel the pressure, and the throw is incomplete. Fabricki was on the coverage as the ball was bounced. Justin Johns was there defensively. Was looking for Dawson. McGowan looking to find a little tight window here. Bruno Fabricki really coming down on the ball, trying to make a play, and then McGowan just throws in the dirt just to avoid an interception. Jalen Washington was also there. Threw it in between Washington and Dawson. Looked to be that Washington was the man he was trying to get it to. As Ben Pugh is on to attempt the field goal. 0-2 so far on the season. Pugh's kick is up and good. He tacks it in for the first points of the game for Westminster. 21 to three, W and J leads with 108 remaining in this first half of play. Let's take a look at some of the PAC matchups going on today. As we're just about set for halftime, Westminster and W and J here today at Cameron Stadium. In Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon is hosting Waynesburg. The Yellow Jackets and the Tartans doing battle. Bethany is at Teal, Allegheny at St. Vincent. St. Vincent College, the host of PAC Media Day, where we conducted an interview with Bryce Butler, the junior for Westminster, that you will see at halftime. And Grove City is playing on the road at Case Western Reserve against the Spartans. So 21-3 to with 108 to go here, still remaining in the first half. W&J still does have two timeouts remaining. Alex, do you expect the Presidents to try to make something of it and maybe try to attempt a long field goal? Knowing this president's offense, no matter how much time's on the clock, they have a chance to score. They're going to go very, very fast, use their signals, get back on the ball quick, and then they're going to use every bit of this field to try and get a score. Any thoughts of a surprise on side for Westminster here? I don't see it this early. However, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Patty back deep. For WJ, Troy Volpatti as the ball bounces and might go into the end zone and indeed will. That's the president's Levi Schwartz thought about picking it up, but instead of touching it, let it bounce into the end zone for a touchback. So we'll see what the president's decided to do with it. Pugh, who was named PAC Offensive Player of the Week last week, 
against Bethany, a 42-7 win. We talked about how great WNJ has been in the first half. Presidents in the first quarter of play outscored opponents 28 to nothing entering today's game and 28 to seven in the second quarter. Opponents against the Presidents have not scored in the second half. Out of St. Vincent and Bethany, Bethany the only team to score against WNJ. This is what goes up the middle to get for Volpatti. And a good carry of 10 yards on first down gets to the 35. Chin the one that made the tackles. WJ goes quick. Now under a minute. Volpatti on the carry. Running near side. Tries to cut it back towards the numbers. Volpatti able to get three yards. WJ not as content to go to the line. The presidents, all they're doing here is just making sure that the Westminster offense does not have a chance to get back on the field at the end of this first half. Yeah, don't let Westminster call any timeouts. And that one first down pretty much prevented any opportunity of that as Pew rolls out. Far side of the field is going to go deep. Looking for Peduzzi and throws it out of bounds. 28.3 remaining. Set up third down and seven. Also stick around for our top ten plays from the PAC last week. A Waynesburg University student Ethan Spazarski put it together. Our top ten plays throughout the President's Athletic Conference from week two action. Third down and seven for Pugh. Pistol formation with Volpatti as the back. Handed off that way. Volpatti brought down right away. Nowhere to go. Play was blown up quickly. Their third and final timeout. By Keenan Heater. Westminster calls timeout in. Will indeed. Alex, get the ball back. The Westminster defense does a great job holding the presidents. The presidents were trying to just run the clock a little bit. However, a big third down stop for a loss allows the Westminster offense to come back on the field and potentially get another field goal or maybe even a touchdown to end this, end this half. Ball at the 36. If you're Westminster, do you try to play for a return or maybe block the punt? Uh, we'll see. I don't even think the presidents will even punt to the return. They'll probably see a deep kick out of bounds just to make sure they don't have a potential for a return, especially with only 22 seconds left. It's hard to see this Westminster offense that's been struggling all day to make a huge drive down the field. The only thing that can really help them out is a big return. Yeah, very fair. Could potentially see that. And try to pin it out of bounds. Special teams unit is out on the field. Ricky Hunter will punt it away. Nobody is back deep for Westminster yet. It appears they're going to try for the block. You can hear on the sideline for WJ timeout, and it is called. So the president's called timeout. Trying to get set up here as Westminster was timeout. pretty much showing all out pressure. Second charge timeout for the With nobody back deep to return it trying to block it and cause one of those splash plays that Coach Sirianni was talking about early on in this game that Robert Mangino told us about. So 21-3. to W&J wanted to talk about it after Westminster used a timeout to stop the clock. Stick around at halftime for our top 10 plays with Ethan Spazarski, Waynesburg University student, put it together, as well as my interview with Bryce Butler in the secondary for the Westminster Titans. Young man from Farrell, Pennsylvania, went to Farrell High School. Junior at 5'11", 194 pounds. And head coach Scott Benzel loves what Butler brings to the table. He's becoming a lot more vocal on the team. He's a really big leader in the secondary and the whole entire defense for Westminster. Really excited to see what he brings to the table for Westminster this year. Hunter is able to get the punt away barely. A hit was delivered in on him and a flag comes out as the punt continues to roll to the 21-yard line and is now picked up. A lot of yelling and 
shouting from the W and J sideline to pick up that ball, trying to stop the clock because that penalty is declined. First down. It is running into the kicker, so only a five-yard penalty. That is declined on what was fourth down and six. Great job by Hunter here, knowing that they're sending every single person on that defense straight at him. With no returner, all you have to do is just get rid of the football, and then you saw a huge bounces um, for the WJ side to pin them back inside their 25. So with no timeouts, 10 seconds left, and the ball at the 21. See if Westminster just takes one running play and then into the locker room. Maybe even just a knee and head to the locker room and contend with a 21 to three score. At the break, the Washington and Jefferson presidents lead it. 21 to three against Westminster. Presidents won last season 17 to 16 as we have reached the break. Alex, what are your first half thoughts? It's everything WJ wants in this first half, up 21 to three. They're getting all the yards they possibly want here. Now let's send it down to Mangino with head coach Mike Sirianni. Thank you, Austin. 21-3 at half. How do you feel? Against a team like Westminster, never comfortable. They're, as you saw, they're capable of moving the ball. They got it within our 15 twice in the last few minutes. Um, they're capable. We've stalled. Um, they've kind of stopped our run game. We haven't really done anything. So this game is not over. These games between the two teams have been nip and tuck. So not comfortable at all. We're going to go in like it's 0-0. I know that's coach's cliche, but with Westminster, they, they're coached very well, and they'll play hard right to the end. A couple of turnovers and some miscues. Next thing you know, this is a lot closer game. Yeah, we got a couple breaks. Um, you know, we, we got to make some plays on a fourth down. We got to make a completion and, and go. So it's just about making plays and, and stopping them from making plays because, like I said, they're capable and they're well coached. So we're going to go and make some adjustments and see what happens. What do you tell the kids real quick? Zero, I mean, like I said, coach is cliche. I know every coach says it and every announcer rolls their eyes, but 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Back to you. Thank you, Mangina, and thank you, Coach Sirianni, for your first half thoughts. As we've reached the break, 21 to 3, Washington and Jefferson leads it. High above Cameron Stadium on KDKA Plus. You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being Pittsburgh's number one platinum preferred roofing replacement company, we offer free estimates from one of the most trusted and well-trained teams in the industry. With over 40 years in the business, JP Roofing is efficient and complete most roofing jobs in just one day. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. Trump Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. I started working out with my dad when I was 12 years old. He said, well, everybody else is sleeping, you up working. It's going to pay off for you. 
biggest decisions I ever had to make my junior year. I had my daughter at the time, so, you know, I'm like, I got to provide. You know, I had the opportunity to leave early. I had to make a decision. Was I going to leave or was I going to come back to college for an extra year? I'm about to cry talking about this shit. Um, once I made that decision to come back, my mindset wasn't just to be good, it was to be great. Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years. And their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids, and they showed up. Morning. I'm going to stay at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. And the Presidents are leading the Titans 21-3 at halftime. Special halftime show for you. Coming up a little bit later on, our own Austin Bechtel sitting down with Bryce Butler from Westminster. But first, though, here are the Pac-10 plays from Week 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Top 10 Plays around the Presidents Athletic Conference. I'm your host, Ethan Spazarski. Starting out with the number 10 play of the week. Washington and Jefferson traveled to Bethany, West Virginia last week to take on the Bethany Bison. And on the first play from scrimmage for the Presidents, quarterback Jacob Pugh threw a 63-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver John Paduzzi. As you come back to watch this replay, you'll see once Paduzzi really hit that 50-yard line, he's able to hit it into that extra gear where then he reaches out over the defender makes the grab and jogs into the end zone for the first six points of the game. Our number nine play of the week, we're heading down to Allegheny College where on the first drive of the game, quarterback Darren Myers for Geneva throws a 63-yard pass to wide receiver Hilton McLean. McLean looks behind him over his right shoulder. He's able to basket that ball into his hands and was able to find himself a little more space out past midfield where he was, where he would be met up at the 15-yard line and spun out of bounds. Moving on to the number eight play of the week. Here we have Grove City traveling down to John F. Wiley Stadium, take on the Waynesburg University Yellow Jackets. And Scott Frazier is keeping right up where he had left off from last season as he caught this 60-yard touchdown pass from his quarterback, Logan Pfeiffer. Frazier last season was a 1,145-yard catcher with 10 touchdown catches himself last season and had led the entire PAC in receiving yards. Moving on to the number seven play of the week. Back to Allegheny where the, the Gators in Geneva would be halfway through the third quarter. Gators down 21-7 and then Zach Aldenbaugh would be able to force a fumble off quarterback Darren Myers and it would be recovered by Samuel Cato as the Gators on their following offensive drive would be able to go down and score a touchdown. Moving on to the number six play of the week. Back over to Bethany, West Virginia, where the Washington and Jefferson presidents are up 14 on the Bethany Bison. And quarterback Jacob Pugh in a hurry-up shotgun formation, where he would deliver a 53-yard pass to wide receiver John Paduzzi, where the two plays later, the presidents would go on and score. Go back here and look at this replay. You can tell. Hurry up. Jacob Pugh doesn't waste any time. He's able to be calm and really have a good presence in that pocket. Excellent work by the presidents to lead on and strike as they would continue to again go on and score on this drive to make it 21 to nothing over the Bethany Bison. Number five. Washington and Jefferson again makes the list. And if, well, if you didn't think it was anyone else other than Jacob Pugh and John Peduzzi, you simply have not been paying attention. Jacob Pugh would hit John Peduzzi for their second touchdown of the day. And again, it was good. This time it was Pugh on the run as he would scramble to his right, stopping, able to fire a bullet pass to John Peduzzi and who's crossing in the back of the end zone. The number four play of the week. 
Allegheny down by seven halfway through the first quarter. And quarterback Jack Johnson, who's coming off a 300-plus passing yard week against Waynesburg, continue to stay hot as he floats a pass over to his, as he finds his 6'5 tight end, Austin Williams, who had some real toe-drag swag, as former NFL player Nate Burleson says. While it was thrown high, Williams was able to really reel it in and help tie up the game for the Gators on this play. Here we are, the top three plays of the week around the PAC. Here we go. We're staying right here with Geneva and Allegheny with 11 seconds remaining in the game. Allegheny down six. Jack Johnson's going to step up, fire in the pocket over the middle, and it'll be intercepted by Daniel Gutzvich at the five-yard line to help steal the game and help the Golden Tornadoes get their first win of the new season. Here we are with the number two play of the week. Running back Justin Flack, merely just 38 yards off of the third spot in the all-time Waynesburg University football rushing record. And on this play here, as you can tell, he clinched it by a mile for an 81-yard rushing touchdown against Grove City to help open up the scoring for Waynesburg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the number one play of the week. We're going to head back down to John F. Wiley Stadium where Grove City held their 16-point lead over the Yellow Jackets and Nico Flatty continued to extend it through the air. No, literally through the air. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Nico Flatty soaring through the air for the 13-yard touchdown. As he reaches that corner of the end zone here, you can see he literally jumps, does a side flip, and lands in the end zone. A spectacular play, definitely worth the number one play of the week here around the President's Athletic Conference. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the top ten plays from this week. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week for next week's top ten. I'm Ethan Spazarski saying so long. We'll see you then. And a big shout out to Waynesburg University student Ethan Pozarski for that production to pack top 10 plays from week two. We're at 21 to three. The president's all over the Titans in the first half. Coming up next, our own Austin Bechtel sits down with Bryce Butler for a one on one interview. It's next. We've continually invested in the best resources and advanced dental technology to ensure gentle and more efficient treatment for all of our patients. It's very gratifying for me to live in the community where we practice. At our practice, we specialize in sedation dentistry, dental implants, and general dentistry. We take excellent care of our patients so that they're comfortable each time they come visit us. Families have been coming to D. Bartolo Dental through the years. Our patients' kids and grandkids are now also our patients. Good job, excellent job, okay? That was tough competition, but it was good competition. It shows you what we need to work on. You can't give up, okay? And you never have. You've never made excuses. So we just get back in, we get in the trenches, we play two games tomorrow, and then we see what we end up with. Got it? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, two. Maya, can you come in here, please? Hey, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it in it. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars take on the Bell Vernon Leopards in a battle of the Mon Valley Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? Your first alert weather. A marginal threat for some strong to severe thunderstorms popping tomorrow. Wherever, whenever. CBS News Pittsburgh. We're going to see some rain, some thunderstorms developing for parts of this weekend on the free CBS News app and Pluto TV. What happens?
happens when you put students first? At Pittsburgh Public Schools, you get exceptional learning experiences. In 54 schools, including one online academy, in 85 early childhood classrooms, 20 magnet schools, and 16 career and technical education programs. More options, more opportunities, more ways we put everyone of our 20,000 students first. Always in all ways. Time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. 21-3, 21-3, the Presidents over the Titans here at Cameron Stadium. Back during media day for the pack, our own Austin Bechtold sat down with Westminster Free Safety Bryce Butler for a one-on-one. Here's that interview. Hi, everyone. You're watching a presentation of PAC Football. I'm Austin Bechtold, joined alongside Westminster Junior Defensive Back Bryce Butler. Great to be with you, Bryce. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. What is your journey overall in football, growing up, playing youth, and now to the point where you are for the Titans? All right. So I've, football has been involved in my life ever since I was little. You know, I started ever since I was five years old. And from then, uh, just kind of uh, as soon as I touched that fight, like, as soon as I touched the football for the first time, I kind of just, you know, found a love for it. So uh, ever since then, you know, just as I grew, just kept playing and getting better and working on myself and just finding the aspirations and dreams to get better as I keep going. How has your relationship with the game changed from when you were younger to now? Uh, I think there's more, I, I see more behind it, you know, as you go from uh, the, the little league up to midgets and then you go to your high school and up to college. It's, it's all different phases of the game, you know, as you, as you get older, as you play more of the football, the game of football you see is like, uh, there's a lot of good people, there's a lot of good talent everywhere you go. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a big mental game too as well, as, you know what I'm saying, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, so I've learned a lot about it growing up, so. I would say it's uh it's been, it's been it's been a long journey. It's been it's been a good a good lesson learned. Did you play any other sports growing up that have helped you with football? Yes, sir. I did. I played uh, basketball, volleyball, and track as well. We weren't uh, fortunate enough to have other uh, programs. Where I probably would have played them. I just wanted to play any sport to you know just stay active and uh, be out doing something. You know, all those sports. If when football is not in season, just try to find something to do to keep myself active. What's one of your favorite parts about playing defense, and especially in the secondary? Uh, you know, uh, being at free safety, you know, you see, you see the whole field. You're kind of like the quarterback of the defense, you know. So being able to uh, direct the guys back there, uh, just having that freedom back there, you know, I, I think I like that aspect of the game, you know. Um, of course, it's defense. You get to hit people. So, I mean, like, I thought it was a good thing, too. Yeah, what's one of your favorite parts about seeing a wide receiver and being able to get the chance to prevent them from getting a first down? You know, it's like football's the only sport where you get to, like, you get to hit someone and it's like it's totally legal, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's like uh, being back there, though, and just uh, playing the game and, uh you know what I'm saying, just in an aggressive manner, you know, just being able to go out, out there and have fun and just do the thing, you know, you, you, you love to do. So uh, I love being back there and I love being able to make plays for my team. What's something that you learned when you were younger, when you were a freshman, when you were a sophomore, that now you've taken into your final season, into your junior season, that you want to try to teach some of those other younger players? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, it's just to get them started early. You know, as I came in as a freshman, uh, those older guys, they took me in immediately and they uh, they got me in the playbook quickly. They helped me in the classroom. They just they got me situated uh, quickly, which I think made a smooth transition onto the football team. So I feel like if I could do that and help those guys uh, do that same transition, have the same transition I had, I feel like it made things a lot easier. I'm joined by Westminster defensive back Bryce Butler. Bryce, what has been one of the best memories wearing that Titans uniform? Oh, man, uh, there, there's been a lot. You know, there's been a lot. I'd probably have to say winning packs uh, my freshman year. You know, that was a, that was a great feeling. Uh, coming in as a freshman and you know that was the goal and we, we accomplished it. What are the main things that you take away from a championship type of season? You know it just kind of it takes it takes a lot of work it starts in the offseason you know you got to start early uh, listen to the coaches uh, getting the drill work in make sure you're knowing what you're doing make sure you have that chemistry built up you know all that all that builds and taking everything uh, week by week uh, that it goes a long way. What do you enjoy most about Westminster the culture the campus and the people? Oh you know the thing about uh, we call it New Willie uh, there's not much to do, you know, so you kind of focus, it, it helps you focus more on football, you know, so it brings everybody closer. Uh, everybody's always on campus together, you know, that, that, that's, that's a great way to bring people together. Uh, I'm very grateful for those connections and uh, the small campus to bring us closer together. You still have a few seasons to play, but what would you like to do after Westminster in terms of your major and your life after football? Oh, uh, you know, um, my, I'm majoring in uh, marketing, so uh, we'd love to go out and like, get it. I've always been interested in uh, like the business side of things. Uh, going out and see what kind of uh, 
opportunities are out there for me. Uh, but besides that, you know, kind of just want to uh, give back to like my community for uh, what they get for what they've given me. I want to give kids opportunities uh, that I didn't have. So uh, just being able to go back to my hometown and uh, making the most of what I can for them. Yeah, how much does the Farrell community mean to you? Oh, it means everything. You know, it's a small community. We grew up, we're so close to it. It's like the whole city's like a family, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's all we got. So coming from that city, you know, I'll never forget them. They'll always, they'll always be on my back. What impact do you want to leave on your community, your family, and on the Westminster community as well? You know, uh, I kind of just I kind of just want to leave that reputation behind of uh, that guy that put put others before him, you know. Uh, it's, it's not all about me. It's... Uh, always put other people's feelings before mine, you know what I'm saying? Just uh, giving people, uh, you know what I'm saying, what they deserve. Uh, I want them to know that I was a good, caring person. Um, and t- tried his best to do it and everything that he did is competitive. And uh, just, just try, trying to make a way for everybody that helped me make a way. What type of message would you give to your family, to your friends, and everyone that has supported you throughout the way? Uh, how, how can I repay you? Uh, thank you uh, for everything. Uh, n- none of that goes unnoticed. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, from my coaches, my friends, my family, everybody around me that has uh, supported me during football, uh, or just in life in general, you know, I, could, I couldn't thank them enough. So I appreciate that. You know, family and football really go hand in hand. Oh, yeah. What is it like as the overall culture and the brotherhood that is Westminster? Oh, uh, you know, we're, well, it is a brotherhood, you know, so it's like everybody's, uh, we have that chemistry there, you know. Uh, as soon as I came in, those guys took me under their, their belt immediately, and that, we just clicked instantly, you know, so. Having that uh, brotherhood, I think it kind of makes it easier to go on the field and play together. What's one thing that you don't think that a lot of people know about you that you want them to know? Uh, as quiet as I may be, when, once, once, I get, once I get around you, uh, you'll see how outgoing and how uh, funny I can be. Uh, just, just there, I just try to brighten up every room I step in, so you know what I'm saying? Just never, uh, never make it a dull moment. Uh, make the others around me happy and make them laugh, you know? That's so, all so it's all about. Bryce, any final thoughts? Uh, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank yes, you so sir. much. Bryce Butler joining us representing the Westminster College football program. The score says 21 to 3. You think that Washington and Jefferson absolutely dominating in this game. But if you look at what could have been, if it wasn't for some key penalties, some key turnovers, you're talking about a game that may be tied at least a whole lot closer than it is right now. Fellas, Back to you in the booth. Yeah, very much so, man, Gino. Thank you very much. Back inside the broadcast booth, Austin Bexler alongside Alex Terrett. Zach Cernudo, really the main story in this game with three touchdowns. If there was a college fantasy football team that you could have, you'd want Zach Cernudo on it as he was able to punch in all three touchdowns for Washington and Jefferson. But turnovers and penalties have been very costly for Westminster with only three points in the first half. Exactly. They can't get anything going on on offense. We saw right towards the end of the first half, they were able to sustain a drive and get a field goal. Um, Hopefully they can come out swinging here in the second half. Two turnovers for the Titans, 13 first downs for W&J compared to seven for Westminster. 243 total yards for the Presidents as well. As we are ready to go, kickoff for the second half. Sent away by the Presidents. As Westminster will have it after tacking on a field goal. In the first half, a fair catch is called for by Gomes, but it bounces into the end zone, and now he's going to bring it out. But since he did signal for the fair catch, it will be ruled as a touchback after the fair catch signal, and he was able to pick up the ball. So that's where Westminster will begin with it, with Ty McGowan in the offense, trying to get something going offensively. I'm Austin Bechtold alongside Alex Terton and Robert Mangino here from Washington, Pennsylvania. First down and 10 at the 25 after the touchback. Cernudo scored on a one-yard run, a five-yard passing touchdown from Jake Pugh, and another one-yard run. First two coming in the first quarter. The last WJ points with 13-34 to go in the second. Running with it, McGowan, positive yardage to the 31-yard line, gets six on first down before he's brought down by Justin Johns. We're going to see this Westminster offense trying to do something different, make some adjustments at halftime, and they're going to see possibly some McGowan runs, design runs. However, he just keeps it on that little fake, gets some positive gains to start the second half. Shotgun for McGowan, two receivers line up each side with Gomes the back. W&J did jump off side, so free play for McGowan. Got to go deep down the field, far side, and... Ball's incomplete, looking for Jalen Royal Island. Bruno for Bricky had the coverage. Why not take a shot on what was a free play? Is Outside, defense number two, five-yard penalty. 
penalty results in the first down. Avery Key jumped into the neutral zone. And so we see with a free play by McGowan, just taking a shot, trying to get this offense kick-started early on. However, just throwing the ball a little too over the top of the of the of the receiver here. So Possible. Luck. Yeah, just overshot him a tad bit. But the penalty does make it first down. At the 36. So more formation, two receivers eight side for McGowan. McGowan steps up, has running room. McGowan, past the 21, Johns can't bring him down, past midfield, 45-40, out of bounds goes Ty McGowan into w &J territory and out of bounds at the President's sideline. Westminster makes some great adjustments at halftime and knowing that McGowan has to start making plays with his legs, sees that the pocket's collapsing a little bit, able to get through and then make his way to the sideline, make Justin Johns have to make a tough tackle and make some miss. And off up the middle, Gomes. Able to get to the 36. Pick up a four there. Justin Johns once again in there defensively. Was not able to make the tackle on McGowan, but wraps up Gomes there. We see Westminster's trying to go a little bit faster pace offense. We saw in the first half they really wanted to slow the game down. However, being down 21-3 really puts your playbook at a little bit of a disadvantage. But now they're just trying to speed things up, get something going, and you see it's working so far. John the senior at 6'1", 220 pounds, went to Franklin Regional High School in the Pittsburgh area. Second down at six. McGowan, plenty of time. Looking deep down the field and will throw this one away. But Alex, it doesn't really seem like there's been a big effect from Dawson Dietz, who is one of the most dynamic players for Washington and Jefferson defensively was named to the D3 Football Team of the Week with a team-high eight tackles, three tackles for loss, a sack, two forced fumbles last week against Bethany. When you have someone like Dawson Dietz in the middle, especially at a D-tackle position, it's so hard to not double-team him as a Westminster uh, offensive lineman. They know they want to take away Dawson Dietz because that's their best player on the front line. However, there's big plays being made by Avery Keith and Zach Valentine and also from Justin Johns in the inside linebacker position. Third down and six. They need to get to the 30-yard line. Pressure comes. McGowan gets it away. Deep down the field, and it's intercepted. Taken away by Aaron Carruthers. Carruthers, second interception of the year, gives the ball back to the WJ offense. And this is what WJ loves about Aaron Carruthers. He's that ball hawking strong safety in the middle of the field. Sees that there's an open ball hanging up in the air a little too long. Has great instincts, makes a play, and now all of a sudden you see the WJ offense back out on the field early on in the second half. And a shot delivered by Angelo Volomeno. Once McGowan released that football, he's just not able to get enough drive on it. I'm sure McGowan would have wanted to. Had a man open, but it allowed Carruthers with a little bit extra time to get over there and make the interception. First down for Pugh at the 16-yard line. Quick pass out to Cernudo. Spins his way out of bounds right at the chains. And this is, I think, the most involved that we've seen Zach Cernudo, the junior tight end, especially compared to last season. He's been involved and really looks today to be Jake Pugh's favorite target. And that's why you see the Westminster defense not allowing anything over the top. So Paduzzi's impact has been limited a little bit. Same thing with McCosco. However, that opens up everything underneath for Cernudo. Justin Haas following his blocking. Gets to the 30-yard line and on second down and one, picks up a first. He's following the block of Angelo Fertini at right guard, who pulled on the play. Far side of the field. And eventually was brought down by Josh Elm. And we see WJ not abandoning the run game, no matter how well they're doing in the pass game. And they're still getting those much needed yards. Huss continuing to lower his shoulder and getting more positive gain for the Presidents. Pistol formation again. Take the hand off Pew. That's a wide open man. Anthony Rosati's got it at the 45. 40, 35, 30. Rosati out to the race. He's cuts inside at the 20 and is down at the 15 yard line. Rosati was wide open. Terry Miller eventually brought him down, but a huge play for the president's offense. You're going to see Rosati consistently going across the formation. Ends up getting lost in the shuffle. We see a little pick play 
And then you see the defenders try to switch, but no one switches on Rizzotti, and he's able to make a huge, huge play, streaking wide open, and Jake Pugh still able to find him, put it right on the numbers, giving him room to run. Rizzotti all the way down to the 16. Well, Patty in as the back. Holmes also in the backfield, right side of the formation as Pugh's in the pistol. Rosati as well as Paduzzi line up far side of the field. And off goes the Volpatti running near side. Volpatti past the 15, lowers the shoulder at the 10. And is taken out of bounds off the hit from Matthew Ranza. He's been very active at his strong safety position today. You see all the Westminster defensive linemen. They load up the box and they're still able to get Troy Volpatti out in space. A lot of good reach blocks by the offensive linemen. Able to get a huge positive gain, let's say five yards, for an easy second down. Second down and five maybe about four check over to the sideline we've seen w and j running a lot to the sideline not running up the middle on this westminster front Bull patty once again bounces it outside Bull patty into the end zone touchdown washington and jefferson troy Bull patty from 10 yards out for the score and that's that same exact play you saw just a seconds ago troy Bull patty initially trying to get through the middle noticing nothing's there bouncing out and then the offensive lineman and the tight end, Zach Cernuto, Ray Holmes, all making great blocks on the outside to give Troy Wolpatti an easy, untouched score. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Bad snap. Hinsdale now looking to hold her to throw it, and the pass goes incomplete. 27-3, WNJ leads it after the failed attempt at the extra point. Presidents out in front with 10.56 to go in third. Media. Media This Saturday, tune in to KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Teal Tomcats battle the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m. only on KDKA Plus. call two men in a truck if you're like kate you're moving and you work hard you've got lots of stuff and no time to move it you need pros people who care about it as much as you do that's why you call two men in a truck two men in a truck Tune in this Friday to the Steel City High School Football Showcase presented by UPMC Sports Medicine as the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars take on the Bell Vernon Leopards in a battle of the Mon Valley Friday night at 7 on KDKA+. Are you ready? 27 to 7 as you take a look at the WNJ cheerleaders. A lot to cheer about. Play up by 24 points for the Presidents. Last carry by Troy Bullpatty in the end zone as it was set up by the long passing play to Anthony Rosati. Jake Q in the first half. 10 of 18, 138 yards and a touchdown. Long of 46 on the play. That was to John Paduzzi. Paduzzi, the, re the leading receiver. In the first half, four catches for 82 yards. Rosati, three catches for 41. Ball is fumbled right off of the return for Westminster. A big hit delivered by the Presidents. Shot delivered by Marcus Harrell, Jr., defensive back. And nothing is working out well right now for Westminster. You see them possibly losing it in the sun. Just hit straight off his shoulder pad, able to pick it up. However, what a great hit. Just a punishing hit. Get that adrenaline still pumping after that huge score. And now you're going to see the presidents roll pretty well in this next couple couple drives. Elijah Grayer, the returner. Flag is down on the field. A lot of looking around at the moment. Offside. Kick in the Westminster is elected to tack on the five-yard penalty. Let's keep the ball first down. The WJ was offside on the kickoff. And instead of re-kicking, just take the five yards. And instead of putting the ball at the 16, we'll move it up to the 21. So the ball actually, instead of being 
further back. Scoreboard here says 16, but it looks like the chains are going to be moved to the 19. So first down and 10 at that spot for McGowan. Back out onto the field after throwing his first interception of the season. Big formation on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Hand off goes to Gomes as he runs that way. Doesn't pick up much, only one to the 20. Let's go down to Mangino. Austin, all the years covering high college, even division three. Player. Go back to Mangino in a second as Ryan Gomes is down on the field and being attended to by the training staff. And we'll take a short break as Gomes is attended to here on KDKA+. Plus. We raised $5,000! When you purchase life insurance and annuity products from GBU Life, you also have more opportunities to give back to your community. GBU matches donations you make up to $1,000 per member. I have GBU Life Insurance! Oh, wow! I have a GBU Youth Policy. Whoa! We've, We've got, got GBU, GBU Annuities! Hey! Our $5,000 just turned into $10,000. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of big checks! checks. Find out more at gbu.org. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Action. Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Working. Back here as the pass is caught, running past the 20, 25 yard line. Reception made by Tate Beachy. Gomes was able to walk over to the sideline and is still being attended to on the Westminster side of the field. Coach Sirianni up 27 to three. A little bit of confusion with the chains at the moment. Signaling first down, but the change should be set. The game third and one. Didn't catch the first half, but did catch the important part. It's third down and one. Ball to 28. Handoff goes up the middle. Keith right there to stop Jordan Lowe, the running back. That was in for Gomes on the carry. No gain for Lowe. The senior 5'8 back from Detroit, Michigan. I just want to show you how quickly Tanner Patty gets to the quarterback. Right Tanner Patty just screaming through the middle of the defense. Dawson Dietz and Jaron Timmons taking up all the attention by the offensive lineman. Able to let Tanner Patty go straight through the heart and make a big play for a loss to set up fourth down. And Avery Keith slow to get up after that play. Timeout for the injury and hobbles over now to the sideline. It is fourth down and one at the 28 yard line. Westminster deciding to run it with Lowe. One of the first times we've seen him here today with an opportunity to carry the football. As Gomes on the sideline was taken out after the injury. The offense remains out there on the field. Elijah Grayer is now the back, standing to the right of McGowan. Two receivers line up on the far side as well as the tight end. Fourth down and one. Pitch out to Grayer. Grayer spins his way past the 30, gets the first down. Makes his way to the 34 as Westminster keeps the drive alive. I love this play call by Westminster. Getting your running back out in space. However, Bruno Fabricki screaming through on the play from his corner position. And then we see a spin move that leads to a first down. Let's send it to Mangino. Thank you very much, Austin. You know, a couple of things in covering football and on the high school level. The speed so much faster here on the field in Division Three. And I'll give you the other side after this play. Deep downfield, it's caught. Chevy Dawson. Dawson breaking off a defender. Still going in the WNJ territory. Makes his way to the 41. 
But a flag is thrown back on the Westminster side of the field at the 39. The offense is moving back. Ineligible man downfield, offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Ten. The legal man downfield penalty will back up Westminster after what would have been a huge play to Dawson. Go ahead, man, Gino. Yeah, Troy Volpatti and him at Bethel Park watched him for years there. And here today, he is running with such power, such distinction. He's running the corners on those sweeps, looking for somebody to be able to hit, and a little disappointed when he doesn't find anybody, like on that touchdown run just moments ago. And the Steelers have a bunch of brothers on their team with Cam and Connor Hayward. We've seen the Edmonds, the Watts. How about the Volpatties, both from Bethel Park? Troy Volpatti at running back, Tanner Volpatti at linebacker. McGowan's pass is caught and out of bounds. Beachy is able to get a couple. John Berardino knocked him out of bounds and got to the 35. You just keep continuously seeing this Westminster offense just hurt themselves. They've done this all day. Those penalties on these huge splash plays that could really alter the trajectory of this game, especially on a huge catch by Chevy Dawson. And now they're backed up in a second and long. Things that can hurt you, tips and overthrows, penalties and turnovers. Seeing the latter really be the case. As to the near side caught and taken for just a couple yards on the play. Avery Keith makes the tackle on Jalen Royal Island. Makes his way to the 37. Sets up third down and long. Let's talk about the WJ defense all day making great open field tackles in that pursuit to the ball. Everyone's making their way towards the ball and they're really breaking down and then swallowing up these offensive uh, player, playmakers for Westminster. And you see that's really turned the tide of the game. So it is third down. Scoreboard reading here, fourth down. The chains are saying it's third. So it is third down. Ty McGowan has time. Throws deep down the middle of the field, has an open man, passes caught at the 35-yard line. Beachy on the reception, moves the chains into President's territory. Great grab on a dive to keep this drive alive for Westminster. We see McGowan have a great throw over the middle, covered by Angelo Volamino. However, Tate Beachy getting on the inside, great ball leading him to it. Low up the middle, Westminster goes quick on first down, makes his way to the 30. Poor Tanner Volpatti makes the stop. Beachy and McGowan, very familiar with each other. Both sophomores, both played at Moon High School. And their senior years played in the WPIL Championship game at Heinz Field. Had a lot of success together and connected on their first touchdown last week. Pass caught by Royal Island. And is dragged down at the 28-27 yard line by Berardino. We see all the attention going to Chevy Dawson for right reasons. However, Royal Island is able to catch that bubble screen underneath, able to turn up and make a few yards to set up a little bit more manageable third down. Helmet came off at the very end of that play, too. So Royal Island goes off to the sideline. Third down and short. Third and two. Needed to get to the 25. Gomes has still not returned after being injured earlier on this drive. Low the back, fake it his way. McGowan looking deep, far side of the field, jump ball incomplete. So Bricky had the coverage on Jalen Washington, the junior from Orlando, Florida, not able to corral it. And decision time again for Westminster. This is what Fabricki does so well. One on one, man on man, on the outside. Even though he has a little bit of separation, goes up for the ball. Fabricki continuously plays through the ball, through the hands of the receiver, makes a big deflection, and now Westminster still with another tough fourth down that they have to go for. Seems like he had his back to the ball too and not being able to turn his head around quickly enough, but also not interfere with the receiver. Very important as the offense remains out on the field. McGowan with low to the back. Jumbo set at the line and nobody was organized in time with the play clock timeout. at three. Westminster first charge timeout of the half. Westminster uses its first timeout of this Second half of play as WJ leads it 27 to 3. Fourth down and two coming up for the Westminster offense after this break on KDK Plus. Dental implants.
can give you back the confidence and smile you feel has been missing. Implants feel, look, and function like natural teeth. And now you can get 12 months, same as cash. Call DeBartola Dental for an appointment at 412-221-9440. Here at Way, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. I'm Andy Sheehan. I'm the lead investigator with KDK Investigates. I live in Pittsburgh. I've raised my kids here. For decades now, I've worked trying to uncover wrongs. We looked at the quality of water here. We found dangerous levels of lead in the water. We dug further. The city's water authority took action. Today, they have replaced more than half of the lead service line throughout the entire city of Pittsburgh. We uncover a problem. We get answers. Positive change for you and your family. This Saturday, tune in at KDK Plus for D3 College Football as the Teal Tomcats battle the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m., only on KDK Plus. Fourth down and two for Westminster. Needing the 25. Grayer is the back. Standing to the left of McGowan. Check over to the sideline now. Beachy, the lone receiver, lined up to the near side of the field. McGowan back in the shotgun. Play clock at eight. McGowan. Take on the handoff. Goes to Royal Island. Stuffed out by the Presidents. Jaron Timmons was not fooled. Blew up the play for a loss and gives the ball back to the WJ offense. Jared Timmons just making his presence known on that huge fourth down. Notices the reverse. Sees the other receiver coming around for the reverse. Stays home, makes a huge play to bring down the, the offensive player to uh, turn over the ball. Take another look here as Timmons just stayed in his gap, and man, they didn't give Royal Island a chance as Westminster tried to catch W and J off guard instead of the run up the middle. Something we haven't seen today. A little end around. Never had a chance. Titan showing pressure off the edge. Handoff goes to Huss. Justin Huss near side of the field. Out of bounds. A little bit of pushing and shoving at the end of it. And now more is Daniel Timmons, who's cousins with Jaron Timmons, was the one that at the very end of it was involved with the WNJ sideline. Terry Miller assisting there on the tackle, but... A little bit of extracurricular activities at the end of it. And that's mostly from the frustration on the Westminster side, knowing that this game is so important to your season moving forward and possibly making a run for the conference title. However, this is not how the Westminster team wanted it to go. And now you see that frustration after the play um, on the sideline. Five seconds on the play clock. Pugh was trying to get the play clock reset. Now with two seconds and one, WNJ has to use a timeout. timeout. He was WNJ looking over to the press short. box timeout. as well, trying to see if that play clock was going to get... Reset, but WNJ uses its first time out of the half, so each team with one with two remaining. 536 still to go here in this second half of play. 27 to 3. Here at Cameron Stadium in Washington, Pennsylvania. We want to remind you that you can catch the Steel City High School football showcase put together by JRM Video Production on Friday here on KDK Plus at 7 o'clock. Thomas Jefferson, Bell Vernon. Local rivalry in 4A between the Jaguars and the Leopards. Quentin Martin, one of the featured players for Bell Vernon, five-star running back going to Penn State. Sean Sullivan, wide receiver, kick returner. Was very explosive in the game I was at earlier this year when Thomas Jefferson played Baldwin at a couple of different touchdowns. Strong in the punt returning game. Keep your eye out for number 11 on the TJ side, as well as Elias Lippincott at running back. A lot of those TJ guys find their way here to WNJ. A ton of Whippeal guys on both sides of the roster, including former Thomas Jefferson quarterback Jake Pugh, the junior on in the pistol formation for the Presidents. With Will Patty the back from Bethel Park. Will Patty gets the carry. Not that much running room. 
It was met by a wall of defenders. Solomon Davis, one of them, as well as Josh Elm. Mitchell Myers has also been involved in the defensive front. Carter Chin, one of the top players on the defensive line for Westminster. Seen a lot of Sebastian DiNardo. Third down and four. Pull Patty to the back. Seen him split a lot of time with Justin Huss today. Pew with time. Across the middle, wide open, Cernudo at the 45. To midfield, Cernudo still running past the 45-yard line of Westminster is where he's dragged down. Tackled down on the play by Matthew Ranza. When you have a player like Cernudo who constantly is so involved in the run game and, and run blocking, it's easy for him to get lost in the shuffle, and that's what makes his presence so well-known on the passing game because these defenders notice him blocking on almost 85% of plays, but then you see him slide out and make huge plays to move the chains. Pew checks over to the sideline. Now sends Vol Volpatti behind him in the pistol. Holmes also into the game. Lined up on the right side of the formation as well. Pew, quick pass. mccosco has got it on the slant pattern. Picks up a first down pass of 30. Down at the 28. And this is WJ's bread and butter play. RPO to the running back. Pull it. A little quick slant one-on-one -on -one coverage with McCosco using his big frame to make a big catch. Especially when you don't have a safety over the top. Pretty easy play. And that's why it's designed like that so that we can have the running back. They load up the box more. Only have receivers on each side. Allowing that one-on-one -on -one coverage. And the way that WJ has run the ball... It's allowed for a play like that is one of the linebackers overly committing up front. Play fake RPO. Mike Sirianni using a lot of plays that we see with the Philadelphia Eagles. His brother Nick. And out goes the Volpatti. Lots of running room. Volpatti is taken down. Strong tackle made by Dylan Sleva, who happens to be the cousin of our spotter today, Ethan Coolahan. As cool hand, step up into the shot here. <laughs> there he is. That's his cousin. Right here, our spotter today with the trusty binoculars. Thank you, cool hand, for all you do up here in the booth. I'm Austin Bechtel, joined alongside Alex Terrett, Robert Mangino down on the sideline, Jake Mislitchik, and Ryan Milan, our producer and director in the production truck. Second down and eight. Handoff goes to Volpatti. Volpatti trying to break off of defenders, but is not able to get away. You're the WJ defense here. You're trying to just hold this president's offense to a field goal because a touchdown really puts you out of this game so late in the third quarter. You just need to force some sort of turnover or create a huge stop on this third down. You cannot let these presidents continuously to run the clock and continuously move the ball down the field because they can easily put this game away on this drive. Caden Crown made the tackle from Lake Milton, Ohio. A lot of guys from the Youngstown, Lake Milton area for Westminster. Set up third down and seven. Ball to 25. Pew with Volpatti behind him in the pistol. Hands it off. Volpatti breaks off the first tackle. Still going. Volpatti fighting his way to the 20. Needs the 18. Maybe about two yards short. Bring up fourth down and two. And you signal yet if the presidents are going to kick it or go for it. You see the presidents going with two tight ends with Holmes and Cernudo. Just loading up the box and knowing that they can easily get these yards. I'm interested to see if they're going to pull it for a little quick flat route or a slant route or continuously to hammer the run game and see if they can get it with Full Patty. Full Patty remains the back. Ternudo in there also to try to block on the left side of the formation. He pulls his pew's going to look deep. Trying to find Paduzzi and miscommunication there, but a flag is thrown. The coverage by Williams on Paduzzi. Ball was thrown to the pylon. Paduzzi cut inside. More sort of the numbers in the middle of the field. And partly probably because he was held on the route. Holding. Defense number one. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. I really like the way that Jake Pugh, even though Paduzzi doesn't really have any separation, still puts that ball out there for once so that the defender can't catch it, but giving the refs the attention they need to see the holding call on Paduzzi. One just quick move for Paduzzi. Plant your foot in the ground and turn, and that's all it took. Yeah. 
First down and goal at the nine after the penalty. Pistol for Pew, now with Huss the back. Paduzzi, Rosati, the two wider series line up to the near side. And up to Huss. Gets a couple on first and goal. It'll be second down and goal at the seven. Tackle made by Evan Lewis. Presence are not as infatuated with scoring here, but trying to run as much clock down as possible. Really shortening this game for the Westminster team, knowing that they need so much to get back in this game. They need as much time as possible. With that holding call on third on fourth down, we see that now only second down, they can take as much time as they need to eventually get some points on the board. W and J came in today outscoring opponents 93 to 7. Only about 10 points all year defensively. Pew dumps it off. Raymond Holmes will walk into the end zone for the Washington Endeavors and touchdown from seven yards out. You see that National Tight Ends Day came a little early with four total touchdowns coming from tight ends. One from Holmes and three from Cernudo. Great look for the brand here for the tight ends. For the tight end brand as Pew just finding a wide open Holmes. No one even around him. So many weapons offensively for the Presidents. Holmes got lost in the shuffle. Now Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up and good. 33 now 34 to 3 as Washington and Jefferson leads it on a beautiful day at Cameron Stadium 71 degrees in Washington it's a beautiful day for football and you're not going to get a lot of these as we go further on into the season it's going to get a lot colder it's going to get a lot windier probably going to get some rain at some point maybe even some snow but a great day, 71 degrees to be able to sit out, wear some t-shirts and shorts and watch some football. Four more home games for the Washington and Jefferson presidents here on KDKA Plus. Six broadcasts in total as we will be at Geneva for WJ at Geneva. Coming up next, Teal, right back here on KDK Plus next week. One o'clock kickoff at Grove City. 2 p.m. kickoff for the Presidents. And they'll be back right here at Washington and Jefferson College. Week six against Allegheny. 2 p.m. kickoff for our first game in October. On October 7th. Jackson Brintnall, the sophomore, will kick it away. Elijah Grayer back deep. He lets it bounce at the six and now picks it up. Grayer past the 20, running far side of the field, and his gang tackled out of bounds at the 24. Grayer was probably looking to see if that ball would bounce in the end zone, knowing that he's had some issues fielding the punt. However, it just bounces right in his arms, just tries to make something happen. He's able to get a little past the 25. What a bit dangerous. Don't know what direction that punt might bounce. It could have even, that kickoff rather, might bounce. Could have even been a little bit further, having a little bit of trouble picking it up. We've seen Westminster fumble on special teams today. A little bit risky. Does get the ball to the 25. So the gallon in the offense looking to try to get something going. Only three points on the board. Lefty quarterback has time. Throw middle of the field. It's caught. Royal Island on the reception. Good enough for a first down and again at 12. Westminster going fast pace here. With a big start to the drive. With a nice little catch by Royal Island. Top receiver coming into today. 137 yards and a touchdown. On seven catches. McGowan. Near side of the field, it's caught. Dawson, short gain of about three to the 40. And a flag on the play in the backfield. Bingo. Offense number 78, Jersey pole. 10 yard penalty, remains first down. It's gotta be just so difficult for Westminster. They're only averaging 17 and a half points per game. Beating Teal last week after an opening game loss to Grove City. 
penalties, turnovers, missed throws, all being costly today. It's just so heartbreaking knowing that you're seeing good things from McGowan. You're seeing good things on the ground by, by Gomes. And you're just consistently just pulling back your offense after big plays because of penalties. Low in at the running back spot after saw Gomes injured earlier in this quarter. Tackle made by Jaron Timmons as the third quarter comes to an end. 34 to three in Washington, Pennsylvania. The president's lead it as we go to the fourth on KDKA Plus. You can now get more local news on KDKA Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 1230 on KDKA Plus. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready? Ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there. When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years. And their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids and they showed up. Morning. Have a nice day at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. This Saturday, tune in to KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Teal Tomcats battle the Washington and Jefferson Presidents. Saturday at 1 p.m., only on KDKA Plus. We begin the fourth quarter, 34-3. Washington and Jefferson leads it against Westminster. This is our first broadcast. At Washington and Jefferson of the 2023 campaign here on KDK Plus, D3 College Football, right here on KDK Plus as McGowan rolls out, trying to buy time. McGowan escapes, makes a nice move past the 25 and fumbles the football. But Matt Howard, the right guard, falls on it. And Alex, obviously, don't want to see any fumbles for Westminster on this drive, but also for Matt Howard on the offensive line. And for any offensive lineman, just to continue to be around the football, just in case of a fumble, ended up paying off. Exactly. McGowan just trying to do a little too much on the ground. Didn't really tuck the ball down too well, but Matt Howard just being there to save even potential of coming back in this game. Because as soon as that ball goes to the presence, it's never coming back. So it makes it third down and 19 after the loss. Ball at the 28-yard line. Westminster needs to get out to the... 47 to pick up a first. McGowan with three receivers lined up on the far side, one near side. Game. Offense number six. Five yard penalty remains third down. And it's going to be a lot more difficult. Third and 19, now third and 24 after a delay of game penalty. Not many third down and 24 play calls in the playbook. Not many at all, but that with the screen pass is what we expect here. And that's what we get as Washington and Jefferson seem to have been expecting it as well. As low on the reception, only got back to the line of scrimmage. If that. With third and 28, there's nothing Official you can really do. Official timeout for injured player. Valentine was there, but it looks like Avery Keith is down and injured. Avery Keith's been battling this injury all day, staying out there to help his team as much as he can. But now with the game getting close to out of reach, you'd like to see him come off the field and rest up. Keith was able to quickly get off the field under his own power. Sets up fourth down and 28. Westminster now. On the punt. Some of the stats throughout the first three quarters. Troy Patty, 17 rushes for 64 yards and a touchdown. Justin Huss, 8 carries for 45 yards. Jake Pugh, 15-23, 242 yards, 2 touchdowns and was sacked once. 
punt is away, and Anthony Rosati will let it bounce. Takes a very good Westminster bounce. Now on the opposite side for Westminster, Ty McGowan, 13 to 23, he's throwing an interception, no touchdowns today, 117 yards passing. Titans will be at Waynesburg next week, and then have a bye to end September before facing off against Bethany back at home on the seventh in New Wilmington. Kind of giving Westminster the chance to get back on track with some of the lower teams in the conference with Waynesburg and Bethany. However, they have also that bye week dead center. Get the, this Westminster offense back on track by putting up some yards and then developing up some play calls so that they can face some of these top teams later on in the year. And something that's also going to be critical, the health of Ryan Gomes. 11 carries for 69 yards, along of 44 also thrown in there. Six yards per carry today, but saw him go down with an injury and has not returned. First down and 10 for Pugh in the offense. Lots of running room for DeRosa. DeRosa to the 40-yard line. Picks up a first down right at the W&J sideline. And got 10 on first down and 10. What the presidents love about this kid, Kobe DeRosa, is how hard he runs. You see him with a little bit of agility, but at the end of the run, turning upfield and fighting for every single yard to get that first down. W and J with 385 yards of total offense to the first three quarters. 237 for Westminster. Three turnovers in the first three quarters for the Titans as well. An interception and two fumbles. Three fumbles, but one that the Titans were able to fall back on. DeRosa on the carry. He gets two yards. Bring up second down and eight. Fall at the 44-yard line. And now Jake Pugh comes off the field, as we'll see Kellen stall for the first time. And it appears that maybe Jake Pugh's day is done, and a strong one at that. Pugh also ran the ball five times for 26 yards. Some applause from the crowd as Pugh comes off after a terrific performance. This is exactly what you want to see from your starting quarterback. Now giving Kellen Stahl some reps with the game almost out of reach here in the fourth. Seeing some of the guys that have not seen as much time so far in this game for the Presidents, including Kobe DeRosa breaking this one past the 45, lowers his shoulder right near midfield. A flag was thrown in the backfield. Holding, offense number three, 10-yard penalty. Remains second down. Holding penalty called, though, on Raymond Holmes. Bring the ball back 10 yards. We've had so much success running the ball today, and that's what we wanted to see with their keys to the game today, was stick to the running game. And they've done that throughout the entire game, even through the fourth quarter. But seeing the Presidents be able to run the ball like this and still be able to put up the passing yards they have, they're going to be dangerous for this conference title later in the year. Carson Klein comes onto the field as Rosati comes off. Nick Wilson also in as Paduzzi comes off to the sideline and gets some handshakes from teammates. 11 and a half minutes remaining. Stahl hands it off to DeRosa. DeRosa follows his blocks. Up the middle, lots of running room. Near side of the field, DeRosa cuts it up inside past the 45. Gets a lot of those penalty yards back and makes his way to the W&J 46 before he's brought down by Bryce Butler. See Huss and Volpatti all day today mixing up their play styles. And now you see Kobe DeRosa stepping in and making an immediate impact and just finishing runs like they always did throughout this entire game. Tayshawn Elliott actually was the one on the tackle. My apologies. 13 from his safety position. Pistol formation for Stahl. Gives it to DeRosa. DeRosa tried to stiff arm. The tackle made by Evan Lewis. Strong play made by Lewis. He's had a really good day today. One of the few positives for Westminster in this game. And the third down run comes up short for the Presidents to the 45. It's fourth down and seven. And the punting unit on. Even though the Presidents not able to come up with points that drive, they're able to rub off enough times as they possibly enough time as they possibly could just making this game shorter and shorter for the Westminster offense to come out 
and potentially make a comeback. And at this point, that's just what you're looking for for WNJ. No injuries, run the football, burn more clock as Ricky Hunter gets the punt away. Good punt. Deep, high kick. Filled it on a fair catch. As next week, we'll be right back in Washington, Pennsylvania for WNJ football against the Teal Tomcats. One o'clock kickoff right here on KDKA Plus on September 23rd. Big day of college football action, especially at night. Huge games going on. One of them that I'm keeping an eye on, Iowa at Penn State. But before you get that in prime time, spend the afternoon with us at 1 p.m. as we get you going. D3 college football here on KDK Plus between the Tomcats and the Presidents. New quarterback into the game for Westminster as well. Billy Levack. The handoff goes up the middle to low. Just gets a couple. So both starting quarterbacks are now out of the game. Ty McGowan takes a seat. In relief now, Billy Levack from Macedonia, Ohio, a junior at six foot, 192 pounds, takes over under center. Second down and eight. Hand off up the middle again. Goes to Lowe. And Lowe gets to the 26. 21, rather. Needing the 25 to get a first down. Keaton Hall makes the stop. Third down and four coming up. Let's go to Mangino. Thank you very much, Austin. Years of reading benches and body language. Washington and Jefferson just feeling really good about this. Westminster wondering what happened to this game. They had a plan. They had some real goals in mind for this game to win this thing. And it's just been off the rails practically from the opening kickoff. A lot of errors and miscues playing into that. As Levac also a lefty, throws downfield incomplete. Was trying to connect with Marcel Smith-Austin from Sharon, Pennsylvania. Only one reception so far this season was trying to double that total not able to connect on third down you see lee back scrambling out to his right he's a lefty so it's a little tough to throw across his body here um, just trying to throw it out of bounds just to eliminate any sort of more damage to this westminster offense that we've seen all day you are played wide receiver for many years what's the difference in catching passes from a left-handed quarterback compared to a right-handed quarterback which is majority of the time the case so it's the way the ball spins on the back end if you have a lefty quarterback it spins the complete opposite from a right, ready-handed quarterback. Punt is away, high, but not very deep. And goes out of bounds at the Washington, and at the Westminster, rather, 47-yard line. We'll take a break with 8.30 to go in the fourth quarter of action. All of Washington and Jefferson in the home opener, 34-3. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Action. Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. a truck we'll treat you and your belongings like we treat our own grandmas here we go Hi. Hello there. Welcome. whether we're moving you across town or even across the country tune in this friday to the steel city high school football showcase presented by upmc sports medicine as the thomas jefferson jaguars take on the bell vernon leopards in a battle of the mon valley friday night at seven on kdka plus are you ready 34 to 3 as you take a look inside our production truck. There's Jake Mislitzik on the right, Ryan Milan on the left. 
our producer and director for JRM Video Production. Our assistant producer, Madison Benedict, in the truck as well. Jack Bible makes the tackle defensively for Westminster. Second down and 11 after the loss of one on first down. A ton of fresh new faces into the game for the Presidents. The final eight minutes. Kellen Stahl at quarterback from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Lines up in the pistol. Hands it off. Not that much running room there for Owen Patricic. But Patricic gets back to the line of scrimmage originally on the play. Mason Paljic makes the tackle. Bring up third down and nine. Got the one yard back that he lost on first down. Gain of two on the play. The thing about this WJ offense is the depth they have at every position. Every single one of these players could be a starter. Kellen Stahl, great quarterback coming off the bench. And then Owen Patricic, the fifth running back down the line, is he able to make an impact early on as well. Stahl, lots of time, throw middle of the field, juggled and caught. Great reception made by Zach Seaman, middle of the field, his third catch of the year for the sophomore 5'11 and 180 pounds to move the chains. It's a great ball by Kellen Stahl. Standing in the pocket, has plenty of time. Throws a strike to Zach Seaman, who has to create it over the, his shoulder, able to hold on to it and make a big chunk play coming out from the bench. And the concentration there after juggling it at first to be able to hold on, take the hit, continue the drive. Patricic the back, standing behind Stahl in the pistol. Hand it off. Patricic up the middle. It's a good game to the 27. Second down and five coming up. We also see two new tight ends in the game. Holmes and Cernudo are done for the day. We see Hunter Bennett and Seth Coons. Still sticking with the two tight ends that they've been able to run and get a lot of positive yardage on the run game. Six minutes remaining in the game. Patrice gets the carry again. Up the middle, lots of running room. Patrice, past the 10, the 5, and into the end zone. 27 yards out. Owen Patrice scores for Washington and Jefferson. The Presidents have put 40 up on the board and laid it 40 to 3 over rival Westminster. And Patricic making an instant impact. A great hole opened up by the offensive line. And then we see running straight downhill. Huge gain for a touchdown coming off the bench. And the presidents up 40 to 3 with the potential to tack on another one. Extra point from Ricky Hunter is up and good. 41 to 3 as we take another look at the Patricic score. Patricic gets the give from Stahl. Just running straight down the middle and then eventually pe pe peeling towards the outside. No defender could stop him there. Just running through all those tackles with the wide open hold given by the President's offensive line. Nothing but open running room. That's all we've seen all day by this President's run game. They've continued to go to it and it's been paying off well for them. Um, this Westminster defensive line has been beaten up all day. They're tired. They've seen so many plays because of the sped up offense by the presidents and especially the offensive line of w and j where it's been the first team the second team anybody that's gone in there has won at the point of attack and has been just so critical for volpatti for huss de rosa and now patricic exactly they better be buying dinner tonight it's a good day in washington for the presidents for westminster it'll be back to the drawing board as the titans We'll face off against Teal. Rather, uh, Waynesburg, my apologies, after facing Teal last week, winning 28-7. to Before that, a 17-7 to loss to begin the season. So for Westminster, it's at Waynesburg, the bye, Bethany at home, at Case Western, Allegheny at home, at St. Vincent, and then two home games to close out the regular season against Carnegie Mellon and Geneva.
Deep kick is away. And fielded at the five yard line. Lots of open running room past the 30, past the 40. Still going for Walt Phillips. Great return to make his way near midfield. Now to bounds right at the 50. Great return by Westminster here. You see a lot of the fresh faces on the kickoff team for WJ. A little tight off the bench. And you can see that Westminster is able to make a huge play and potentially just get some, get some confidence going into next week. Try to get as many points as possible. This game is a little out of reach right now. Five minutes, 42 seconds left. Down 41 to three. But you're just using this as a confidence builder going into next week. Maybe get some uh, touchdowns for these younger kids. Not scored a touchdown at all today. Only three points. And off goes up the middle. Big hit delivered by the Presidents defensively. Seen that so much today. As Jason Nativio delivered the hit. Jason Nativio coming from his corner spot. You'd love to see second in the secondary really making an impact in the run game. Makes it easier on these linebackers, defensive linemen, knowing they have that support on the back end. Be second down and eight. Man in motion for Levac. Handing it off. Open running room now and still pushing towards the 45 yard line. Demarion Collins on the carry. Good run here. Breaking up as many tackles as possible. We've seen WJ's done a great job of wrapping up and not allowing many runners to get through them. Now we see a couple of missed tackles here. However, still setting up a third and mid, a medium here. Third and five at the 45 of Washington and Jefferson. Pass is intercepted by W and J. It's been all presidents all day. John Beard on the interception takes off the pass from Billy Levac, and the presidents take it right back. And look at the ovation for John Beard here. Beard with a great read. However, he cannot stay on his feet. That would have been a huge pick six. However, still a big play by Beard. You'd love to see some of these new fresh faces still making an impact and these young guys lots of excitement there he got the powdered wig the turnover wig john beard first one of the day how about that the turnover wig is that new this year i didn't see much last year it looks like beard has his own turnover wig but he had to put a new one on for this one how about that? Lots of high fives and handshakes going around for Beard after the interception. And off up the middle. Patrice carries for about four yards on first down. About four minutes left to go in this game. What have you liked from WNJ other than just the point of attack? There's so many things to take away positively for the presidents. In your mind, what's point of emphasis so far? I love the balance of play calling. Um, play calling was, was perfect all day long. Continuously switching up the run in the pass. And then you saw the run game was setting up the large deep shots on the pass game. Even when they were trying, Westminster trying to take away their best asset in Peduzzi, Cernudo, Rosati, all stepping up in big ways to make this game out of reach. Kaysan Green into the game at running back. He gets the carry. Green spins his way to midfield. Carries to the 49-yard line into Westminster territory. WJ trying to just run the clock out. They don't even want to send their defense out here in the last bit. Three minutes, 15 seconds and counting. It's just a great statement win for the Presidents, who's just played perfect all day. Even with a little bit of penalties in the beginning, they still overcame all those penalties and were still able to move the ball down the field consistently. Walt Hess on the tackle for Westminster. One of the guys that have gotten into the game for the Titans. Trying to make some plays here in the final couple of minutes. Patrice returns as the running back, letting the clock go all the way down to one second on the play clock. Patrice got it up the middle. Lots of running past the 40, 30. Patrice is off to the races to the 20, 15, 10, 5 into the end zone again. 49 yards out. Owen Patrice.
Patricic, twice as nice to score twice. And two touchdowns for 22. Owen Patricic, just see that burst of speed. Able to get another huge score here late in the game. Got to love his efficiency coming out the gate. And Patricic with some sneaky speed as well. Nobody able to track him down from behind. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and the kick up and good. So with 2.39 to go, Washington and Jefferson leads it 48-3 against Westminster. And you know, Alex, this is honestly pretty surprising. If you look at all the scores from this matchup, dating back to 2015, Last year, 17-14. 2021, 23-18, Westminster won it. 2020, Westminster won 27-20. 2019, Westminster 28-21. The Titans won 27-20 in 2018. W&J in overtime won 34-33 in Washington 2017. 2016, Westminster won 16-10. And in 2015, Washington and Jefferson won 35 to 31. It's been dominated by Westminster ever since 2016. Prior to that, though, the last time Westminster beat WNJ was 2000 in Washington, 19 to 17. From 2001 to 2015, WNJ won every matchup, including in 2014, 56 to 21. And you've seen um, over those past few matchups, especially the last five meetings. They've all been really low-scoring games for the most part. However, the reason why Westminster has so, so much success is because they were able to get to the quarterback and cause turnovers. We didn't see any of that today. The defense really struggled because WJ was firing on all cylinders, run and pass. WJ leads the all-time series 17 to six. Will improve that to 18 and six after today. Lots of running room past the 40, 45, and still going. Strong run back on the play for Jordan Lowe, the running back for Westminster out there on the kick returning game. But out, out of all those matchups, Alex, this is the lowest scoring for Westminster. Only three points. The fewest amount of points from that span dating back to 2000. Westminster at home only scored six against Washington and Jefferson in 2013. And we've consistently seen those struggles with Westminster all year. Week one against Grove City, tough matchup. Both teams like to run the ball, and they only produce seven points all game. And now you see against a stellar WJ defense, only coming out with three, with the potential to tack on just a little bit more, but not enough to get them back in this game. Handoff off the middle, goes for five yards. Taking a look at the D3Football.com Top 25 poll, Carnegie Mellon represents the conference, 271 points as the 15th best school in that poll. Washington and Jefferson also did receive votes, 26 total votes for W and J. Definitely gonna see a little bit more votes go to the, the president's way after a huge statement win against Westminster. Yeah, that ranked 29th, those 26 total votes. Yeah, you're right. You would expect in this lopsided type of game, it's a big time rival, knowing what Westminster Historically has been very good dominating win for WNJ. And not only coming out with the win, but winning in the style they did. You don't really see many many disadvantages um, for the presidents as many um, things they really need to work on. However, there's always something to work on in football. It's that mentality of never being satisfied that turns good teams into great teams. Eden Harrison in it running back carried the last two times and now this time as well. Harrison up the middle. Past the 30 to the 28 yard line. Another strong run for Harrison. Set up second down and short as the clock continues to tick away in this matchup. PAC standings Carnegie Mellon, Grove City, WNJ, all undefeated entering today at 2 0. Case Western at 1 0 with an early bye. Allegheny, Geneva, Westminster. All one and one entering today, crowded in the middle of the field. Bethany also just one game through the first two weeks. St. Vincent, Teal, and Waynesburg still looking for their first wins. Design QB run there. 
moving the chains, getting a first down. Only 43 seconds left. I'm wondering to see if, if they're going to maybe take a shot at the end zone or just let the clock run by. Lane Wojtek at quarterback. And why not if you're Westminster? 31 seconds left. Take a shot towards the end zone. And instead deciding to continue to run it. Aiden Harrison on the carry. Won't need to run another play. Looks like they're going to try to get one more in before the end of this game. Possibly take a shot at the end zone. 12 seconds left. Wojtek in the shotgun. And he will look to throw. Incomplete. Three seconds left. It'll set up fourth down for the final play of the game. Didn't, did not seem like the receivers for Westminster saw the pass coming. Wojtek pulling the ball, trying to look for, for something outside for to his receivers. Not on the same page there. So two receivers line up to the near side for the final play of the game for Wojtek. He'll hand it off. Harrison goes up the middle. Gets to the 10, and the clock expires as the Washington and Jefferson presidents in dominating fashion take care of the Westminster Titans. 48-3, to all W and J, all day, as the presidents take care of business at home in the home opener. 48-3, to one of the most dominating fashion games in this entire series history. You usually see the Westminster team kind of ending WJ's undefeated seasons a lot um, and then possibly taking away their chances at conference titles that we've seen in previous years and actually beating the Presidents in 2021 for the PAC title. However, this year, it's a little bit different for the Presidents. The Pre Presidents have dominated the last two matchups. We're going to see if this rivalry continues over the next couple years or if we're going to see it shifting towards the Presidents. A ton different as Washington and Jefferson moves to 3-0 and overall as well as 3-0 in PAC play. All games this year being in conference action. As we take a look at some of the highlights, Zach Cernudo, the main highlight of today's game with three touchdowns. Two of them rushing, one receiving. Ricky Hunter, success on all of his extra points. We saw Jacob McCosco, Anthony Rossotti, John Paduzzi factor in. In the passing game with Jake Pugh, Raymond Holmes scored. Running back, converting to tight end this year. He walked into the end zone wide open. Two touchdown rushes for Owen Patricic. Owen Patricic, rather. Fantastic game for him as well. When he got his opportunity. And for Washington and Jefferson, an overall dominating performance from start to finish. Well, let's send it down to Robert Mangino with our player of the game. Zach Sanudo, three touchdowns, two on the ground, one receiving. Normally it's Jake Pugh getting all the attention, but a running back, not even the lead running back, coming up big today. Yeah, uh, credit to the O-line, uh, game plan, uh, you know, putting me in the right situations. Uh, O-line, we just uh, were running on all cylinders today, and I thought we executed very well today. Amazing victory against an opponent that really they've had your number in recent years. Yeah, yeah it's good to get back on the winning track, you know, uh, they've had our number. Uh, we came out today with a little bit of fire, a little bit of aggression, and uh, we played really well today. On the other side of the ball, defense has been playing remarkable. Came into the game three and a half points a game. They beat that, only giving up a field goal. Yeah, defense has been playing great all year. Credit to those guys. I mean, uh, couple, past couple years, you know, they've been, you know, holding the offense, and now we're starting to put it all together, and uh, I think it can be real dangerous here. Zach Sanudo, once again, the player of the game. I want to make sure you know you've been officially invited to the All-American Bowl December 16th at U.S. Bank Stadium. Congratulations Thank for that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. It's a great honor uh, to be selected for that for a bunch of great players. It's, it's a great honor. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Austin, back up to you. Thanks, man, Gino. And congratulations to Zach Sanudo. We want to thank our entire crew for being a part of our broadcast. For Robert Mangino and Alex Terrett, I'm Austin Bechtel. So long from Washington and Jefferson.